Freeman will have the best game this weekend because he's playing at home. He's playing a defensive secondary in which he can score touchdowns against. They've given up 15. Grossman wins the Heisman with his performance this weekend. And poor Eric Crouch. One loss and, and you're out, but Crouch probably has a chance to make it to New York. What about our game that we're about to see? Marshall and Toledo for the MAC championship. Well, I'll tell you what I like Toledo. I had Toledo in a game this year. Chester Taylor will run the ball for probably 200 yards plus this game because the Marshall defense gives up over 200 yards rushing a game. Yeah, I, I like Byron Leftwich. He's a nice player, but I think that Mark's right that you're going to find that Chester Taylor is going to control the ball game. By the way, I didn't get my Chester for Heisman t-shirt. Where is that? You came back from Toledo, you bring nothing. It's in the mail. It's you, in just the mail. Need, you just need your tickets for the Texas bandwagon. Mark it. Jones in 036. Chris Spielman ready to bring us a MAC championship game, guys. <laughs> They get scholarships too, so they'll make some plays. At first, they'll strike sometimes during the game now. So keep it up. Stay together as a team. Okay, stay together as a team. Stay focused. Understand they'll make plays. We make plays. Should be a great game. Four years ago, Randy Moss ushered in Marshall as Monarchs of the Mac. His forays into the end zone igniting their title run. Then, Chad Pennington's arm was the factor, lacerating and devastating defenses. Now, quarterback Byron Leftwich is doing it with moxie and marksmanship. His skills directing Marshall to a burgeoning collection of hardware. The herd is stampeding towards its customary coronation. Their battle cry now, one for the thumb. And here come the thundering herd onto the field at the Glass Bowl. Carrying with them a 10-game winning streak. They haven't lost a football game in nearly three months' time. We are in Toledo amongst the fireworks. Marshall against Toledo. It's the MAC Conference Championship. Marshall coming in number 18 at 10 and 1. Toledo at 8 and 2. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with number 36. Chris Spielman, we're glad you came aboard. Chris, there are very special players, and then there are the elite players of college football. Byron Leftwich, the quarterback for Marshall, one of those elite players, 34 passing touchdowns this year, number two in the country in total offense. He certainly doesn't lack for skills. A great athlete, 6'6", 240 pounds. And the thing that Byron improved on from last year to this year is his ability to recognize defenses and get rid of the football without hesitation. He's a big-time player with a big-time arm. And great players, Mark, play great in great games. And this is a great game tonight. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, Toledo, their marksman, their guy that runs the offense, the key cog, Chester Taylor. There was no $100,000 billboard at Times Square Heisman campaign. They sent out a two-minute videotape, and Chris, the tape really doesn't lie. He's Heisman material. Oh, he's straight stout. I'm telling you, Chester Taylor is the real deal. Now, when Rod Spence, the court, court, offensive coordinator from La Tech, came up here, they said, Chester, you're not the running back anymore. You're the super back. That means you have to catch passes, you have to block, and you have to run. And when he does run, he can make you miss, or he can run straight over you. He's a great player and is a key to Toledo if they win tonight. Tom Amstutz, the head coach in his first year at the helm, leading his team onto the field, looking to avenge two prior losses to Marshall in this title game. They come into this game extremely motivated. We'll be back with the opening kick in just a minute. This holiday season, share the gift of Stetson. I wonder how our home equity loan is going. I'll check. for your home equity loan at LendingTree.com. Fill out one simple form and get up to four offers. When banks compete, you win at LendingTree.com. You know, athletes are pretty well known for their superstitions, but I gotta be honest, our guys can be pretty quirky, too. How was the show, Kenny? You too. There was this one time Brian had a great show, didn't bathe for 17 days straight. Whereas this year, though, it's been a very different story. The worst had to be when Dan spilled clam chowder, Manhattan clam chowder, all over Reese. Had his best show ever. Of course, that got old for Reese really quickly. Yeah, he's in makeup. Okay. Welcome back, everyone, to the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio, getting set for the kickoff of the MAC championship game. And right now, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe with the coach. 
you have played or coached at Toledo for most of your life. Can you put into words how it feels to bring your team here to the MAC championship well, in your first season? Well, we feel really honored to be here, and this is something a team works for all year long for the opportunity to win a championship. I'm really proud of our seniors, proud of our coaches, and we're just so happy to be here. Your team is coming off of a tough loss, but you've got your quarterback back, Tavares Bolden. How much does his return mean to this group? Uh, Tavares Bolden, he's the man, so we'll be ready to go. Tell us a little bit about your defense. I know you've been giving up some points in the last few games. Do you feel confident they can stop Leftwich tonight? Well, nobody can stop them, but we'll try to slow them down, bother them, and uh, we have butterfly nets for all of our defensive backs, so we'll do something to try to slow them down. Thanks very much. Good luck. Thank you very much. Back to you, Mark. All right, thanks a lot, Holly. There's the secret to the defense, butterfly nets, huh? Toledo won the MAC Western Division four of the last five seasons. They've won 13 consecutive games here at the Fortress known as the Glass Bowl. And the last time they played against Marshall, they really had their way, jumping out to a halftime lead that was tough to overcome for Marshall, finally winning 42 to nothing. On the other side of the field, Bob Pruitt in his sixth season at Marshall, they have overcome a lot of adversity during the course of the year. Started off with some suspensions, but they've been able to overcome those and arrive here in the MAC Conference Championship game. Chris, they've won four straight, aiming for number five. Well, I'll tell you, Mark, one of the big things, if you're a championship team, you want to hold on to that. You develop an attitude and a mentality. And they've won those championships at Marshall. Now they have a chance to come to the glass ball and take a championship home from on the road. Toledo has deferred. Marshall will receive. But as I mentioned earlier, it is cool and crisp here. A slight wind blowing tonight from our broadcast booth right to left and a little bit across the field. And it is 44 degrees outside here. As I mentioned, Toledo wins the toss. They defer, Marshall will receive. Back deep, it'll be Roberto Terrell and Josh Davis for the thundering herd. Certainly should see a lot of fireworks tonight, Chris, on the field. Two teams renowned for their offensive production. Yeah, Mark, it's important for Marshall, since they did get beat here last time, 42-0, 38-0 at halftime, in order for them to get some confidence to even kill that subconscious beast that they might have inside them that they don't, they can't play here in Toledo. They need to fast, start fast. We'll see if they can do that with their first possession. Last time Marshall played here, they were blitzed early and often. Byron Leftwich did not have a lot of success. Terrell lets it go through the back of the end zone, and the thundering herd will start off on their own 20-yard line to begin this game. Byron Leftwich, the quarterback, 6'6", 240 pound a junior. 34 touchdown passes this season against just six interceptions. Threw for over 3,700 yards. The skill people behind him, the guy to watch, Darius Watts, number 40, in some publications, an All-American. Davis, Marriott, Kellett, and Wallace join him. First down and 10, a three receiver formation. Complete to Darius Watts, the All-American, out to the 23-yard line. Take a look at the offensive line. An offensive line whose primary job tonight, protect Leftwich, keep him upright. Shulo content, Steph Peretta and Nate McPeak up front. Yeah, yeah two All-Mac conference tackles there. We'd love to have those bookends that are All-Mac because they got to protect the big fella. Speaking of bookends, Brockmore, number 93, the guy to watch on that defensive front for the Rockets. Eight sacks for him on the season. Second down and seven for Marshall. Leftwich to pass. Got rid of it to Marriott. What a play by Leftwich. As he was falling to the carpet, delivered a strike at the 41-yard line. That's a great throw. That shows you the strength of his arm. And his composure to still deliver the football. He's got plenty of time to throw here. Again, the Marshall offensive line doing a great job there. He's slipping. He might be down. We'll see it from the end zone here. Let's see if his knee touches. But the composure to get rid of the football. What wow. a great throw. That is a great throw, a big-time throw, and not a throw that many quarterbacks can make in the whole country. It is a first down and 10 near the 40-yard line for Marshall. They hand it off. That's Franklin Wallace, the six-foot sophomore. Let's take a look at the linebackers. Daniels making the last tackle on the play for Toledo. 
Wow. He's joined by David Gardner and Tom Ward. Yeah, Ward and Gardner got to play big to take the Marshall running game and make them one dimensional. The pressure on the corners, Anderson and Heflin for Toledo, Boyd and Morris, the safeties. Pass complete to Watts, who's run out of bounds at the 42-yard line by Heflin. It's not hard to figure out what Marshall's trying to do. They want to get the ball in Darius Watts' hands and let him get some yak yards, yards after catch. Look at his impressive numbers, completing 68% of his passes this year. At 6'6", tall and imposing in the pocket. First and 10. They run the draw. And Wallace is brought down after a gain of about three yards by Andy Boyd, the all-conference free safety. Wallace is six foot, 190 pounds sophomore. Earlier this season, he sat out a couple of games because of improprieties. They actually had a few players, but they were able to get a little continuity back, get him back into the lineup, and it's been a nice run ever since of 10 consecutive victories. Second down and eight for the Thundering Herd. Toledo coming with a blitz. Marriott can't hang on at the 32-yard line, had it in his arms. And Toledo came with his own pressure. That time you saw the corner play and soft. He's going to give up that little out route. That's a ball that needs to be caught. You see Leftwich recognizes the blitz. He's going away from the blitz. A good quarterback will always throw away from the blitz because that's where the weakness of the coverage is, and Byron recognized that. Now, we take a look at Franklin Walls. He will tell you, Mark, by his depth behind the quarterback if it's run or pass. So if you're at home, check the depth of the running back from the quarterback, and that will tell you if it's run or pass every time. One I've the, already noticed that. One of the keys, they're almost 50% conversion on third down. Wallace brought down right near the first down marker at about the 32-yard line. It's going to be close. He was tackled by Ophelia. That's good hustle by defense lineman getting downfield, but you always want to try to knock a guy back. It's tough to do when you're chasing him from behind. They're going to bring the chains in to measure here. Talk about left, which what I like so far is his recognition of the defenses. That time they came with another pressure blitz. He saw Franklin Wallace sneak out of the backfield. He checked to pick up a blitzer. Nobody blitzing was coming on his side. He checks out. Leftwich recognizes it. Hey, get the ball to the running back. He's, he knows what to do after he catches the ball, and he goes and gets it. They are inches, Chris, short of the first down. Do you go for it, or do you kick the field oh, goal? Go for it, baby. It's championship time, man. you got a 6'6", 240-pound quarterback behind a 300-pound center. you got to be able to move something. Look at what they've done on the season. 61% on fourth down. That's winning percentage. They've gone for it 18 times in an ordinate amount. Leftwich got close to the 30, and that gives Marshall the first down. Yeah, Toledo didn't defend that very well. I mean, we call quarterback sneak up here. They left the gap open. If you're going to defend the quarterback sneak, you need to get some of them big bodies in the gap between the guard and the center. Toledo did not do that. You see it right here from the end zone, Mark. Right there, see that gap right there? It's too late. They tried to pinch down in there, but the ball was snapped. They couldn't get down there and get penetration to stop the sneak. Gives them a first down and 10 at the 30-yard line. Wallace up down at the 28. The 24, Jehu Anderson in on the stop. Gain of about two on the play. Offensively, this is a very potent team, Chris. Passing and scoring. Third, fourth, and sixth in the nation, respectively. Yeah, their philosophy is they're going to take what the, what the defense is going to give you. They're not going to run just to run. If the defense has a run defense, they're going to throw it. They'll throw it 100 times if they have to. They don't care. They dictate to the defense what they want to do. Leftwich taking his time in audibly. Tenth play of the drive for Marshall. Toledo blitzing. Complete. Watts down to the 14-yard line. He was working on Boyd, the free safety, who made the stop. And another first down for the Thundering Herd. Well, when you go to Lala Boyd, you're going to go a three-step drop, and you have an All-American wide receiver like Darius Watts, and a guy that can deliver the ball. 
That's what happens. Good result. Now, I noticed a lot of people slipping out on that field tonight, Mark. They better check their cleats, get the long cleats in, take the short ones off. It rained continuously here in Toledo for a couple of days. First down and 10. Leftwich overthrew his intended receiver, number 82, Josh Davis. And it'll be second down and 10. Davis, one of the players this year that has been a very pleasant surprise for head coach Bob Pruitt. He said at the beginning of the season, Chris, when we saw him, he needed his young core receivers to develop some confidence and chemistry. They've done that. Yeah, he plays that inside slot receiver, Mark. That's the guy that is responsible for recognizing coverages and changing his route according to coverages. The outside guys have already predetermined routes. The inside guy does not. And his second down and 10. Time winding down in the play clock. Leftwich took his time and made an incision in that defense. Exactly right. Incision with precision. That ball was thrown right where it needed to be thrown. You take a look at the route right here. He's going to push the corner up the field and use his speed. Now, the corner was looking for somebody to help. There was no free safety back there. What happened to safety jumped the underneath the route. The receiver recognized that and was able to get to the post corner of the end zone and able to secure the catch. Left which engineering an 80-yard scoring drive, and De Niro Marriott was the one that made the touchdown catch. Several all-MAC performers, first and second team on that offense, they show their skills right there. We'll be back. His first attempt, a 360 Tomahawk. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Amazing. And now the alley-oop reverse. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design. Oh, my. And what everyone's been waiting for, the two-handed thunder. For the perfect dip every time. Oh, the judges have to be impressed. New Tostito Scoops. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. Here we go. I'm bummed. I'm seeing hair here and hair there. So I started using Rogaine. Simple, safe, clinically proven to regrow hair. Look, nothing here, nothing here. It's all here. Rogaine, stronger than heredity. Behold Gandalf the wizard. Behold Frodo the hobbit. Now they're not just to behold, they're to be held. Now at Burger King, buy a Whopper value meal and get a Lord of the Rings light up glass goblet just $1.99 each. Collect all four. The adventure begins here. what you've done with the place. I love the holiday season, Teddy. No kidding. I was thinking we should give people a little holiday gift. You know, a little stocking stuffer just for coming into our stores. That's nice. Any ideas? I was thinking about free gaming software. That's a great idea. I love playing Santa, Teddy. I just love it. Get Sierra's 3D Ultra Pinball Thrill Ride free. Now at your Gateway store. There's all kinds of great deals going on at your local Gateway store, like a free flat-screen upgrade when you buy the Gateway 500X featuring an Intel Pentium 4 processor, and other great deals, like computers starting as low as $599, and terrific financing offers like Gateway's special no-payments-for-six-months plan. And while supplies last, we'll even give you Sierra's 3D Ultra Pinball Thrill Ride gaming software for free. Just call 1-800-GATEWAY for the store nearest you. Welcome back to the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio. Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman and Ollie Rowe on the sidelines. Marshall leading 7 to nothing. Byron Leftwich, the quarterback, directing an 80-yard scoring drive. 6 of 8 on the drive for 66 yards passing. Using up a little bit under four minutes. That was his 56th career touchdown pass. You know that no huddle that Marshall ran gave Byron Leftwich time to survey the field, survey the defense, and make the correct decision. And three times during that drive, he changed the play. Making adjustments on the run and hit one of the up men. Marshall has the ball. They squipped it off one of the up men on the kickoff return, and Marshall has the ball right back. And it's in Toledo territory at the 48. Tom Ward was the guy who bounced off him. 
I don't know if that was on purpose or by accident. It worked out. Now, if you're Toledo and you want to be a championship team, you need to respond to sudden change. You'll see right here, he just kind of mishits it, I believe. He's trying to squib it down there. Tom Ward, what he does, and I played that position right in the front line there. You can't turn your head. His head turned a little bit, and it hit him off the leg because he lost sight of the football. He's got to be able to get out of the way of that football. First break of the game, Chris going to Marshall. Davis in motion, they hand it off. Wallace. Wallace with a first down at the 36-yard line. Right now, they're becoming two-dimensional. And why they're becoming two-dimensional on an outside run, if you're going to play for Marshall, a receiver, you better be able to block. That time, Josh Davis did a great job of cutting down the flank player or the outside player for that Toledo defense. Wallace, Chris, limping off the field. They get a host of backs in the lineup. Carey, number eight, is in there right now. Bugs also plays. Leftwich complete to Watts. And Watts makes it down to the 28-yard line where Heflin chops him down. All right, what, what Darius is doing is he's reading a three-deep coverage. The three-deep coverage, it's a soft zone. The corner's not supposed to play tight. He's going to play off. So Byron's reading that. Darius is reading that. All he's doing is standing up, throwing him the football and say, go get some yards, Darius. Darius is doing it. A little pitch and catch for Leftwich and Watts so far. That's one of the early storylines here. Second down and three. The draw play to Carey. Carey plowing forward. Brought down by Gardner. Going to mark it right at the first down marker at the 25-yard line. Mark, just to go back to that previous play, don't be surprised. Sometimes during this game, you see that fake pass to Watson. You'll see Josh Davis heading for the corner of the end zone. And Byron Leftwich will hit him in the corner. Trying to set that up. It, it'll be set up. I guarantee you it'll be set up. It's a first down and 10, meanwhile, for Marshall. Marriott's split wide to the bottom of your screen. Watts to the top of your screen. You got the running back at seven yards deep. It should be a run. If I'm right, it should be a run. That's exactly what they do. And Carey lost his footing. He was thinking about six. And a nice block on the edge, too. He does get a good block by the tight end. That right there. Now watch. Good, good cut. Missed tackle. That's going to kill you. Another hey, first down. Anderson's got to make a play. He's got a chance to put a helmet on somebody. He can't slip. Come in there, head up, wrap him up, make a play. Nose of the ball in the 14 for the herd. Marriott in motion. Flag down, Marriott down. And Carey is tackled at the 11 by Anderson. There's a flag at the 15. 9.23 to play in the first period, and Toledo's offense still hasn't gotten onto the field. This one a hold against Marshall. David Neal, our man wearing the white cap today. Mark, how you, how you can tell this is a run? Let me show you. See the depth behind the quarterback? He's seven yards. He's back that far so he can get the ball and, and read a hole to run to. Now, when he's up at five yards, he's up so he can pick up some pass protection. Now, if I'm a Toledo defender, I've got to be able to recognize that as a linebacker tell my defensive line, hey, slow down on that pass rush, boys. They're going to try to shove it down our throat with a run. Right now, we got a two-back formation. Yeah, that's shotgun. Possible draw to me. Yep, there's a Statue of Liberty. They come back the other way on the run. Anderson making the tackle on the play. The wide said possible draw because Colette, the tight end, was cheated up with Carey just behind him, giving them position and the angle to get the ball on the Statue of Liberty or the reverse play. Well executed play. They're 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 drawing them up in the astroturf dirt over there. It Mark. sure looks that way, doesn't it? Second down and eleven. They've been pretty good inside yeah. the twenty in the red zone. I guess so. So far, racking up 122 yards of total offense. Toledo blitzing, and it's batted down to the line of scrimmage. Leftwich was looking into the end zone for that pass. 
He was batted down by Tom Ward, number 30. And Tom Ward did a good job of getting his hands up. He's on the blitz, realizes he cannot get penetration. So what do you do if you don't get penetration? You get that big ball in the air. He does a nice job. Ward, the junior linebacker, making a key play. And it's third down and 11. Come with another blitz. Touchdown, same play to Marriott. He burned Anderson on the coverage. And unlike the last time Marshall played here, this is a very different beginning. Jehu Anderson's given up the inside. You cannot give up the inside on these receivers. He's counting on help from his middle linebacker, but he's not able to get there. And again, it's a timing route. It's well delivered. Now, if you're playing man to man, you got to take away that inside and disrupt the timing of the route. They're not doing that. The guys are having his way. They're going to start drawing straws out there for Jay Hu. The extra point is live. Curtis Head, the all conference pick, missing the extra point. So Marshall, though, still has a 13-0 lead. Chester Taylor, number 19, has yet to touch the ball. He'll hopefully get his opportunity when we come back with Toledo on offense. 13-0 when we come back. scroll saw and compound miter saw specially priced for the holiday season can you see what's so special about the Braun synchro it's the first shaver whose head moves from side to side so it captures more hair and cuts closer only it moves so fast you can't see it but you can hear it and to keep it feeling like a new shaver every day here's how to clean it right up until kickoff a little football amongst friends sunday nfl countdown sunday mornings at 11 eastern only on espn the 2001 mac championship game is brought to you by gateway you've got a friend in the business number seven continues to impress he has just passed chad pennington also a Marshall grad for most yards passing in a season. Continuing to climb the list. Chris Demeter still running, too. He's just getting started. And, and when he misses, he doesn't miss by much. That ball's right there. They scoop it again like they did last time, but this time Toledo recovers it. And Bodie... Returns it out near the 40-yard line. Let's take a look finally at the offense. Tavares Bolden, the starting quarterback, a 6'1", 205-pound senior this year, has thrown 12 touchdown passes. Let's take a look at the skilled people behind him. We talked about Chester Taylor, but there's a pretty good group up front joining him as well. Holmes, Johnson, Green, and Ford. Green, the team's leading receiver. Dante Green's exciting player. Keep your eye on him. Paul Ford, meanwhile, number two, had a big week last week. Keep your eyes on this offense. Don't blink. It's a no-huddle job, and they move quickly with pace and tempo. A fumble on the snap. And Toledo fortunate to get it back. Chester Taylor pouncing on the loose ball. Take a look at the guys up front offensively. It's Kayser, Tuminello, Otterbacher, Comer, 
and Randolph up front. They gave up the seven sacks this year. Yeah, Otterbacher, a walk-on, is a tough guy in that group. He's the scrapper. Ralph Street, one of the guys to watch off the edge for Marshall, along with Washington, Hicks, and Smith. Second down and 12 after the loss on the fumble. Taylor between the tackles out to the 42-yard line. And Marshall caught a break right there. Looked like they jumped off sides. Yeah, no flag. Look at the linebackers for the Thunder and Herd. Times, Jones, Yates, the player of the year defensively in the conference, and Owens. And Max Yates, a uh, great linebacker. Charles Hines, their best blitzer. And the secondary, it's a 4-4-3. Tarpley, Crocker, and Satterwhite. Crocker, the leader back there. Third down and seven on Toledo's first offensive possession. Bolden under pressure, and incomplete, and he went down hard at the 35. Ralph Street coming from the backside. Yeah, Tavares Bolden here looks shows shows the wears of not playing last week, because I'm telling you what, he had Manny Johnson come across the middle there if he was just to held his position in the pocket. He got a little happy feet in there. He tried to get out too quick to look to pick up the first down with his feet. If he'd have held in the pocket, delivered the ball to Manny Johnson, he was open on a deep dig. Instead, it's three and kick. Had him into punt last week. He set a map record with a 92-yard boot. 75 of which were actually in the air. Fair catch called right at the 10-yard line by Curtis Jones. And number seven is coming back to work. So far, he has put on a clinic, passing and decision-making. Marshall with the lead in the MAC championship when we return. The other stand is still for me, Bert. Oh, did he get the phone back? It's the third truckload this week. Yeah, great deal. You get the bonus pack, $49.99, after a $30 rebate. Plus, now you can get 5,000 minutes for just $39.99 a month. Yeah. Can't keep them on the shelf. <laughs> Is there a pink doll on that shipping order? Nope. Hey, can we give it to Bruno? Get the Primeco bonus pack and now get 5,000 minutes a month for just $39.99. Call 1-800-PRIMECO. I will lead my battalion into the Argonne, but I doubt if you'll see me or my men again. Rick Schroeder, in a true story of ordinary men made extraordinary by their bravery. Caught between two lines of fire, the Germans gave them two options. Surrender or die. Our boys are bombing us! Take cover! They chose a third. Forward! The Lost Battalion premieres Sunday at 7 p.m. on A&E. College football Saturday. It's the SEC West Championship game. The Auburn D travels to Death Valley to try to stop Rohan Davey and LSU. LSU, 745 Saturday on ESPN. College football Saturday. Joe Paterno looks to continue the Nittany Lions winning ways. Incredibly, with just one more win, Penn State becomes bowl eligible in this record-setting year. Touchdown! Penn State, Virginia, noon Saturday on ESPN. Welcome back to the Glass Bowl. Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe. David Gardner, the linebacker in the middle for Toledo. Big tape there in the first quarter. Symbolic of them right now. They got to stop the bleeding in Hemerton, Chris. Yeah, getting that old knee held in there together. Franklin Wallace back in at tailback. First down and ten from the eleven. Complete and a first down out to the 38-yard line, number 45, the tight end Kelly. Brought down by Dodrell. You gotta do a better job of recognizing run and pass. That's what's straight. And you see Kelly come down here. Cover two. They went right for Gardner's replacement. They attacked him right away. Good coaching. The guy's fresh off the bench. Number 45, Dodrell came in. Went right after him. First down and 10. From the draw, Wallace back in, has a little seam. And pulling away. Touchdown, Hurd. Sixty-two yards through the cold Toledo night into the end zone. Vision and burst. Tell them about it, Franklin. Vision and burst will get you a 62-yard run. 
big M on their helmets. Good Stanford motivated. Maybe they remember what happened last time when Amstutz's team beat them 42 0 here at the Glass Bowl. They've been nothing short of impressive here in the opening moments. They've had their way offensively. The thundering herd looking for their fifth consecutive back title with a 20 to nothing lead. And it's not so silent here, Chris, because they traveled a lot of fans here. They've done a great job. It's a great job by an offensive. This is a counter draw. You see the cooler right there is coming in to kick out. Does a nice job kicking out the linebacker. Makes a great cut. Missed tackle. Everybody's gone. Gone. See ya. Touchdown. Again, you'll see the guard pull around. Get a kick out block. Recognize the whole vision. Burst. Gone. Makes people miss. Nobody's going to catch him from behind. He's going away from the corner. Oh. Patient. Now the burst. There you go. It's Josh Davis finishing off the block. Receivers blocking well downfield. Leads the big plays in the running game. Well, this is the team's leading rusher last year as well as this year. Number 56, Steve Clinton. Showing some athletic ability on the pool. Then kicking out a linebacker. 20 to nothing. And, uh, boy, there's not too much noise coming from Toledo's side of the field right now. This time they pop it up on the kickoff. Antoine McCray out to the 31 yard line. But don't forget tomorrow at 7.45 Eastern time on ESPN, it's an SEC West showdown as Rohan Davey and the LSU Tigers host Auburn live from Baton Rouge. The winner now earns a spot in the SEC championship game. Davey set a school record of over 3,000 yards passing this season. He's dealing a hot hand. More information, log on to ESPN.com. There's another one of those quarterbacks out of the Dante Paul Pepper Bowl. Guys look like big tight ends and linebackers. They do. Tavares Bolden now with a daunting task. Hands it off to Taylor. Up down to the 32-yard line. Michael Owens making the stop on defense. Taylor will ride 11, 205 a seat. You want to keep Chester Taylor in this ball game as 20 to nothing, but it's early, so the running game still can be a factor. Now, if we're talking the second half, they take Chester Taylor out of the ball game. He can't run. He got to throw to get back into it. Plenty of time for Chester to get rolling. Second down and nine for the Rockets. It was three and out, and the first and only possession on offense. Taylor again, up to the 35, brought down by Ralph Street. Toledo took a play out of Marshall's playbook. That was just the same play that Franklin Wallace went 62 for. A little counter draw. You wonder about Toledo, Chris, being able to shake off what they went through last week when it was kind of tough to flip the switch back on. They got a little fat, admittedly so, last week, losing to Bowling Green. Now they need to shake it off, but they're going to get embarrassed in the glass court tonight. Third down and six. Johnson in motion. Blitz coming. Incomplete. No flag on the play. And Terrence Topley helped break that one up. Another three and out for the offense of the Rockets. Yeah, Tavares Bolton looks like he's rushing a little bit. Again, if he would just held the ball a little bit longer, he would have saw Manny Johnson on the corner route about 16 yards downfield with nobody within 5 to 10 yards of him. Keep in mind that number one, Bolden, did not play last week at that loss to Bowling Green. He suffered from back spasms. Had him into punt. Standing on his own 22-yard line. Back deep, it's Curtis Jones for Marshall. Jones at the 16. Didn't slip that time and falls down at the 30, a 15-yard return after a 49-yard punt. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. Guys, you've been talking about it all night so far. There's some severe slipping going on on this AstroTurf. Right now, Marshall is frantically changing from this cleat that has the longer single prong to this cleat that looks like more of a cone. I'll show you, this catches on this turf much better. Right now, they're frantically trying to change their player's shoes. For Toledo, though, they're staying with the longer cleats. We'll see how it affects them as the game progresses. Well, Toledo, so far, Holly hasn't gotten any traction on drive defense or offense. Hey, you got to go with the, the rubber cleat, man. Is that that's the better one? Yeah, that's a better one. I told you yes, that's the one I'd wear. Perry in a tailback. He gets the handoff. And he's tackled at the 30-yard line. Little or no gain on the play. 
tackle made by Tom Ward and Sid Daniels. The same play they scored the touchdown that time. Gardner was able to get some penetration, bounce the ball out, make him run the hump. You run the hump, you can run sideways. He had the pursuit time to get there. Up and down and 10. Three receiver formation for the herd. Carry the back. Toledo blitzing again. Marriott complete. Near the first down at about the 38-yard line, working on Jehu Anderson again. Now this is his zone pressure again. You'll see the defensive alignment drop out. Jake McClain will drop out. Here comes his zone pressure from the strong safety to Mike. And Jehu has to play off. He does not want to get beat deep. It's a three-deep zone. The left which recognizes where to throw the football. You throw it away from the pressure. The pressure was coming from his left, so he throws it to his right. Experience speaking right there for Byron Lethwich. An impressive number. 10 of 13, a couple of touchdown passes. Wallace back in the game. He's the lone back. Complete to the tight end, Kellett, and he has the first down to the 46-yard line. So seems, Chris, like it's a matter of pick your poison. Marriott or the tight end, Kellett? He is picking his poison. And, uh, you know, they're getting the manageable third downs, too, uh, so he does not have to throw the ball over 10 yards to get a first down. He can dump it anywhere he wants. He's in position to get first down just by being third and short. Marshall with 242 yards of total offense. Wallace back in the ball game and Pollard at the 46-yard line by Andy Boyd. Andy Boyd with a big stake in this game as a freshman. He was unable to play, and then they ended up losing a couple of times in this championship game to Marshall. So number 42 is certainly one of the more motivated Toledo players on the field. And, and a tough tackle. That was a great tackle. One step and wrap, two steps and squeeze, see what you hit. That was the same play, but the opposite way that they scored a 62-yard run on. We'll see if Toledo can get that fixed. Eftwitz with the receiver screen to Marriott. Got a nice block. Marriott with a first down to the 34-yard line. And another first down for Marshall, that time picking up 19 on the play. Yeah, three nice blocks led by Peretta, the guard pulling out of there, showing his athletic ability. Well, they fake it over here to Darius Watts. We've been going there. Let's go back this way. We'll see, right here we have an opportunity. There's a block right there by Peretta. There's another block knocking the defense lineman off, who on that play need to make the play to stop the going from, for long yardage. It's slip screen. And first down and 10. I'd be keeping an eye on number 13. Right now he takes a break. Leftwich up top for Watts. And another first down at the 13-yard line and a flag. We'll tack some more yardage on this. Brandon Heflin was providing the coverage. They're starting to lose their composure when you get a 15-yarder after a guy turns around six ways and sideways. But the, right now, the Toledo corners cannot match up with the athleticism on the outside. They're going to have to find a way. One way to do that is forget the blitz, rush three, and drop eight to give your corner some help. That's what I would do right now as a defensive coordinator. Late hit out of bounds on the defense. Half the distance, first down. You see the route run here by Darius Watts. He's going to push the corner up the field. Bam! Turned him around because he broke his route off sharp. And the ball was delivered before he made his cut. Mentioned that's what Youngstown State did last week against Marshall. Gave them trouble dropping eight guys into coverage. You have to. They can't match up that very the outside. Carrying it back on first down and goal for Marshall. One of the few incompletions intended for Josh Davis. Leftwich can't believe that he actually missed one. Second down and goal. It has been a long and very profitable maturation process for Byron Leftwich. He's already surpassed Chad Pennington with a max single season record for passing yards. Second down and goal. His receivers have gotten better as the year's gone on, which obviously makes Byron a better player compared to the first game of the year against Florida. They've improved dramatically. Flag down. Looked like there was a little premature movement by number 75, Shula. The left tackle.
Try it again. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five yards, previous spot, second up. One of the few miscues today for Marshall's offense. Shulo, an all-match first-team performer, number 75. And you never know that that's the face of the leading coach on the scoreboard right now. Bob Pruitt. Look for him to go to the middle of the end zone again. They throw it back to the tackle eligible Shulo. No signal yet. They're going to mark him down just shy of the end zone. Got a flag down. That's it. On balance play where Shulo lined up as an eligible receiver. The usual offensive tackle, number 75, who the penalty was called on just a few moments ago, came back and made a nice catch. It's against Toledo. We're going to take a look at it. Here's Shulo right here. He's lined up as an eligible receiver. Now, this guy's ineligible since he's eligible because he's off. He's off the line of scrimmage. He's on and on, so he's the eligible receiver. There he goes. He just sneaks out. The guy thinks, I got a great pass rush. And you see the big boys down there getting blocks, leading him for one of their, one of their partners, one of the big hogs. I got a chance to score. They really wanted him to get in. Big content again, getting outside. Look at the Look at, look at the big fella run. Put that to the pro scout. Say, I can run the ball. I can catch a ball. <laughs> Pruitt opening up the playbook. Leftwich sacked back at the nine by Gardner, who's back in the game. Yeah, he's hurt, too. I tell you, he's playing a lot of guts because he's playing with one wheel. One wheel that's been taped up with that brace, but he came on the blitz, got pressure, went for the round, but it's championship time, Mark. You got to find a way to get it done. He got it done right there. A tough guy. That's the first sack of the game against Marshall. Second down and goal. Daniel Marriott, number 13, split wide to the top of your screen. He has two touchdown catches already tonight. He's looking at Darius. He's looking at Jehu. He's looking at Byron. And he's almost sacked. And they're going to rule that he was in the grasp and brought down. They're going to rule it a sack by Samir Hamoud. Now things are boiling a little bit down in the field. Shulo getting into it. Doing a little jaw jacking with one of the players from Toledo. Byron sitting in the pocket. Samir does a good job of keeping pressure from the inside, not losing his pass rush lane. Those inside guys can't lose pass rush lanes. If they do, that opens up holes for the quarterback to run through. That's good discipline pass rush right there from the inside defensive tackle. Well, this is a third and goal. The ball all the way back at the 17-yard line. This is the 11th play of the drive. They caught him in a blitz. This is Josh Davis. Right down at the 12 by Ward, so it's fourth down and goal and a pretty good defensive sequence by the Toledo defense, Chris. Yeah, they needed to do that. They didn't quit even though they had first and goal short. They were able to come up with two big plays on the sack to get off the field on third down. This is a tough kick, Mark. There's a pretty good headwind going in. Well, they'll have the win at the, at the next quarter, though. Tom Ward trying to inspire his troops. Byron Leftwich moving his team up and down the field with impunity. We'll be right back. ESPN College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Now, 90 minutes. gifts at Office Depot. Office Depot. Proud sponsor of the 2002 U.S. Olympic team. The dentist will be right with you. Thank you. Now you can go from drilling holes to driving screws in a snap. Okay, are you ready? Oh, <laughs> get the firestorm with Quick Connect, built by Black & Decker. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Go! No, no. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. Man, that tastes awesome. No, no, no. Get Selsun Power. Great. Credit card bill. Look at these bees. Honey? Huh? 
One rate for purchases, higher rate for cash advances, and those telemarketers. Relax. We switched to Capital One's new no-hassle card. Introducing Capital One's new no-hassle platinum card. No balance transfer fees, no telemarketing, one low fixed rate. Honey? What's in your wallet? Last week on Sunday NFL Countdown. It's fun to block when you get the bus yeah. rumbling behind yeah. you. This week, get up close with the Ravens' top motivator, Shannon Sharp. Herman Edwards' Stingy D has pushed the Jets to number one in the AFC East. You have a good defense, you can score some points. And it's all in the grip. See how the NFL's top quarterbacks handle the ball. Plus, previews from all around the league. Get all your NFL news and pregame analysis first with Sunday NFL Countdown, beginning 11 a.m. Sunday on ESPN. Coach, you're up 20 to nothing over Toledo. Tell us quickly, you told the officials before the game that you would try that play down in the end zone in the red zone with the tackle eligible guy. Did it work like you wanted except for failing to score? Well, we got it on the inch line first and goal. We just had a miscommunication down there. And uh, back didn't get the play, so Byron was stuck with holding the ball. So all we should have done is snuck it in. We have 27. But we got to be happy where we are, but we got to play four quarters. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Boy, if Coach Pruitt was any more laid back, he'd be in a coma. Jeez. <laughs> you can be like that when you're up 20 zip. Curtis head into attempt a field goal from 28 yards out. He's 8 of 9 on the year. And he knocks this three through with the wind at his back as the quarter changed. And Marshall leads 23 to nothing. The number 18th ranked team in the country pitching a shutout against Tom Amstutz's team right now. Let's take a look now at our ESPN game track and some important points to hit in this game early. Two big catches by De Niro Marriott. When you think talk about big time players, look at those numbers. 15 for 19, 188 yards, two DDs. And a nice run by Butchie Wallace. 62 yards into the end zone, setting the tone early in this ball game. Marshall jumping out to a very impressive lead and Marshall, the team also that struggled a bit last week, Chris, with their opponent, Youngstown State, didn't play all that inspired early, but did hang on to win. Well, they did. Championship teams know how to win when they do struggle. In fact, the coaches for Marshall said, hey, boys, we're not even going to watch a film of the Youngstown State right. game. We'll get ready for the MAC championship against Toledo. And so far, their preparation has paid off. Marshall takes a lot of their character from their head coach, Bob Pruitt. Very self-effacing, very laid back. Very humorous, although you'd never know it right now. He, he's smiling inside. He just hasn't told his face yet. Dante Green brought down at the 14-yard line. Coach Moore College Football coming your way tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Wide receiver, number one, Charles Rogers. What a treat he is. And running back, T.J. Duncan. And Michigan State hosts Missouri. One more win for the Spartans, and they become bowl eligible. Another team out of the Big Ten. Yeah. Some talk that they might end up just up the road in a bowl game. Well, they'd like to see them in the Motor City Bowl against Toledo. Be a great draw for them. Toledo already with a bowl bid. But a lot of work to do right now, trailing 23 to nothing. Bolden to Green. And Green out to the 22-yard line. Elvis Smith making the tackle on the play. Toledo breaking tendencies. Usually they outscore their opponents in the first quarter, but tonight it's been a reversal of fortune. Yeah, that's amazing. It's tough to score when you only have the ball for six plays to the opponent's 32 plays on offense. You can't score if you line the ball. Second and two. Pass complete. Taylor used as a receiver that time. And he has the first first down of the ball game for Toledo. Let's go to Holland. 
Guys, I was trying to get a sense from Toledo's sideline how their offense was feeling right now, down 23 to nothing. I got the sense that they are not panicking. Right now, they're very business-like. A lot of conversation was going on on the sidelines. It's almost as if they're waiting for anything good to happen at any moment. All right, Holly, and uh, the coach certainly not looking too worried either. Bolden fires a little bit high, intended for the tight end, Andrew Clark. That time, Tavares did a good job of being patient. Let Clark come across on the bootleg. It looked to me from up here that that's a pass that needs to be caught. But the Forest threw the ball a little bit high. Now that shows the wears and tears of not playing a week. The timing is off a little bit. Not playing last week against BG. And Bolden, of course, keep in mind that he completed 69% of his passes this year. Second down and 10. Andy Johnson in motion. They give us to Taylor. Taylor, the Taylor brought down by Max Yates. Number five, the linebacker, and the defensive player of the year in the Mid-American Conference. Yeah, deservingly so. I'll tell you, he's a big kid with great instincts. That time he snuffed out Chester Taylor, made a great hit, a good tackle. 6'3", 235, a senior. We have 31 more tackles than any other player in the match. That's outstanding production from your linebacker. On third and six, they run the receiver screen to Manny Johnson, who has the second consecutive first down for Toledo. Out to the 43, tackled by Terrence Tarpley. Yeah, with this no-huddle offense, Mark, you have to do is you have to get in the rhythm. Toledo needs to get in the rhythm, get that ball playing, get going. Here's that receiver screen. Here's the offense line. Get downfield, get blocked. There's a great block on Michael Owens by the big offensive tackle. Getting out, getting in space, hitting little people out of space. His offensive linemen in the spread have to be able to move. There's a second string tailback, McCray, in the ball game now. And he takes it out near midfield to the 49, a gain of about seven yards. Tarpley and Yates in on the stop. And this Marshall defense has given up close to 200 yards per game on the ground. That's why Toledo feels like they're never out of it because they're such a strong running football team. You really don't expect that sometimes out of the squad that runs the spread. They run it again right between the tackles. McCray again with a nice gain down to the 43-yard line and another first down for Toledo. Chris, you mentioned they're starting to get some rhythm now. Yeah, that, that, that right there shows power and toughness. That was the blue five hitting the, or the yellow five hitting the green five. Max Jakes, the yellow five knocked the green five back. If you're a linebacker, you got to knock the guy back. That time the yellow five beat the green five. First down and 10 for Toledo. Gray again, trying to get to the edge. They ran it into the boundary. Gain of about four on the play. Gray, the 5'11", 200-pound senior. He's the guy that gets the fill when Taylor wants a breather. He runs with toughness, too. It's amazing the, the amount of talent that comes to schools like Toledo, Marshall. BG Miami, the match schools. Great talent there. 21 all-conference players being represented on the field today for both teams. Green complete. Down to the 30-yard line, and they continue to move the ball. Another first down. Yates making the stop. And yeah, they're getting a little rhythm. They got a little swagger in their step. That time Dante Green did a nice job of securing the catch and making the first player hit. We've seen it all year, Mark. People put their head down, they can't tackle. Number one rule. See what you hit. Get your head across the bow. Thank you. First down and 10. And Gray again, this time brought down at the 29-yard line. Chris, sometimes when it comes to spread offenses, tempo is so important. And the, the officials play a key role in that. They've got to get the ball down. And there's always a focus on that whenever you have a spread team. Yeah, the offensive coordinator, Coach Spence, said, hey, they can't get the ball played quick enough. And that's been an issue all across college football this year. The general rule is that you want to get the ball in play between 12 and 17 seconds. Coach Spence would like to see them play within six seconds. I don't think that's going to happen. Warp speed. We have an injured player on the field. It's number 84. Josh Cordell. He's the backup defensive tackle inside. He fills in often for Washington and Hicks. It's good to see him walk off. Got a little limp there. Said Josh, jog off as you can, kid. Never let him see you hurt until you get to the sidelines. That's it. 
And Marshall's defense so far holding up, but then again, they haven't been on the field all that long tonight. Uh, and, you know, I, I get the feeling, Mark, that Toledo's not out of this football game because they do have an explosive offense. But Tavares gets his timing, which he will, no doubt, they'll get back into this football game. A two-back set. This is Taylor. Now to the 27-yard line, stopped by Washington on the play. As the officials scurry to get the ball in play. Interesting to watch both teams look at the sidelines for direction to get the play calls. You, you see all the skilled players for Toledo look at the sidelines. They'll get the play. Tavares will get the play, tell his lineman which way to go, whether it's a run or a pass. They line up and step it. Third down and seven. They throw it back on the screen, but that was well read. Complete to Ford, but he did well shy of the first down. Terrence Topley made a great read. He did, and I tell you what, we talk about being able to block people in space. That time Eric Fasten had a chance to knock Tarpley out. Tarpley does a good job of using his athletic ability and making a miss. You'll see it right here. Here comes the big throw. Oh, I missed him. And here comes Tarpley inside, beats him inside, and makes the play. Fourth down, and the offense is staying on the field for Toledo. And I like the call. I'd snap the ball right now because some of the Marshall guys are like, where do I go? Where do I go? Make substitution. And they come with a blitz. Incomplete, and Marshall will take over on downs. So the first defining point of the ball game, Marshall wins the battle on the gamble. Carl Ford was the intended receiver. He was working on Satterwhite. I'm not sure if I agree with that call because you have rolling out to his right here. Now, he's got to make a tough throw. His timing's been off a little bit because he's throwing across his body, and that time he throws it away from Ford, his receiver, on the curl route. He had him open if he could have put it inside, but throwing across his body, he pulled it to the outside. And now it's left with his turn. First and 10 for the 26. Wallace got out to the 30. Wallace already with a touchdown run of 69 yards tonight. Boyd making the stop on the play. Look at this impressive run of possessions. Touchdown, 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 and field goal, Chris. I'd say if you have those kind of numbers, ball control, you win it all. Every time you get the ball, you score. Woo. That's a powerful offense. There is second down and six. Leftwich, number three in the nation in passing efficiency, number two in the nation in total offense per game. Wide open in the flat, and Josh Davis, his intended receiver, got bit by the turf monster. It's a little slick out there. Josh, you're a great athlete. The turf monster can't get you. At that time, he was open because why? Toledo's so concerned with Darius Watts. They had three guys on the corner route covering Watts, yet Davis was open on the flat route, left which ready properly. It's just that Josh Davis lost his footing. Well, there was nobody near him that time. Third down and six. Wallace the lone back. And Leftwich is going to step back and walk over to the sidelines and vibe with his head coach in the brain trust and figure out what to do next on third and seven. They lead when we come back. We ought to be flying for a rock star. We could save the music. Nick Burns! Eject! Eject! Now, get ready. Our man is down behind enemy lines. To cross the line. The American people want their pilot back. Behind enemy lines. You're so funky, Dixie. Rated PG-13. Now playing only in theaters. Okay, class, today we're going to work on handwriting. Now try to make it very neat like I did. That's good, that's good. All you have to do is follow the curves on the board. Very nice. Okay, tomorrow we're going to put my cards in the envelopes. Trying to save a little time this holiday season? Then come to Best Buy, where you'll find gifts for everyone on your list, all in one place. Best Buy. This holiday, turn on the fun. For 
for everything she means to you and everything she ever will. The three stone necklace for your past, present, and future. A diamond is forever. Discover card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. A look at University Hall in the distance, one of the signature buildings here on campus at the University of Toledo. We are in Toledo, a city built on the shoulders of the glass industry during the late 1930s and early 40s. Mark Jones, Chris Beerman, and Holly Rowe here, 23 to nothing, Toledo trailing in the second quarter. Byron Leftwich of Marshall looking at third down and six. Leftwich hit as he was releasing the ball, and it's incomplete. Good pressure provided that time up front. A key thing, too, Mark, they're getting the pressure with four men. That way they don't have to sacrifice five guys, leave their DBs on the island. You see good right here. Good rip swim. There's a TE game. That means tackle inside first, the end comes underneath. That's a good little stunt. One that Marshall has had trouble picking up the past two series. Curtis headed to punt under pressure and barely got it off and got off a good one. Monte Green back at the 15. Flags down and Green pushed out at the 35-yard line. A 52-yard punt by Head. And Brian King was in there and may have gotten a piece of the punter. Somebody got shot in the back. Nail yeah, the guy in the back. That's when you got to throw your hands up. You can you can belly bump him and not get called. But if you try to kill him, you'll get called. You can be just as effective if you belly bump him. Well, one of the flags was thrown back at the 30-yard line. Oh yes, yeah. there's flags everywhere. One for each team. Tom Amstutz took this job. In December of last year, sat in his office, had to ponder what lay ahead for him, a pretty daunting task, and he said, you know what, i got to start recruiting. i got to start recruiting some coaches and players. <laughs> he was he was in his office December 11th, so happy to, to have his dream job, be the head coach here at the University of Toledo. And he says, wait a second, I need some help. I have no coaches. <laughs> so he was recruiting players and coaches. What a great guy, though. I mean, uh, it looks like it reincarnated Artie Donovan, or Artie Donovan from the Colts. It does. This guy's beautiful. I love him, man. He's, he's assistant coach at Toledo for 21 years. Played here as well for three years. It's good to see the university reward loyalty. Like they did with Coach Amstutz. What a great guy. All right, now, they got to kick it again, Mark. They came close to blocking that punt. If I'm the special teams coordinator or coach for Toledo Rockets, I'm going to run that same thing. Say, hey, did you get that fixed? Run it again. See if they got it fixed. Now, Curtis had barely got that off. Pressure came from the right side. Toledo's left. Curtis Head has lined up a yard short. He should be at 15. He's taking a snap at 14. He hasn't had any block this year, and he gets off a low-line drive punt. Driving Green all the way back inside the 10. And it'll go into the end zone, but guess what? There's another flag down in the play. This one went 70 yards. Head may not be done yet. They can punt it again. Yep. He's saying go for the block. He's only lined up at 14. He's listening to our telecast. Six men on the line on the kicking team. Five yards, previous spot, fourth down. Even I know you got to have seven. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Pruitt trying to figure things out, so we'll do it for a third time. Let's count him here, see. One, two, three, four, five, six. This guy's off. He should be up. See, he's not up there. He's off the line. He's got to be up here to be on the line. They have seven. Now, look, he's lined up at 14. He needs to line up at 15. That's a general rule. 
So they was recognize that, and they came close to blocking one, the first punt, not the second punt, because they had to return on it. Why not come after it, man? You're down 23 nothing. Come get it. There they come. Come on in here. That's it. 25's coming in there. They're stacking them up. They're going to bring the noise. Ow. And a great punt by him. Another 70-yarder. This one actually going 75 because of the infraction. It'll come out to the 20. Coach Amstutz's team with a big job ahead when we come back. Hey, love. Can't wait to see you tonight. Hope you're taking care of Monroe. Oh, Monroe? It's... How's London? Great. Oh, Monroe looks lovely. Yeah. What was that? Hmm? Was well, something just fell off of Monroe? Oh? What is going on? Uh, it's autumn. I want to be like Buddy Lee and help out everyone I see. I'd help my neighbors with Tai Chi like Buddy Lee. Buddy Lee. Lee Dungarees. Can't bust him. College football Saturday. It's the SEC West Championship. Auburn will try to stop Rohan Davey and LSU. Auburn, LSU, 745 Saturday on ESPN. College football Saturday. Brandon Doman and BYU aim to keep their undefeated season and BCS hopes alive against much improved Mississippi State. Doman scores a touchdown. BYU, Mississippi State, 8 o'clock Saturday on ESPN2. Unscripted with Chris Connolly. Not and just sports stuff. From Mary Zeta. It's unrehearsed. Not intellectual enough to follow that question. <laughs> it's unpredictable. <laughs> unscripted with Chris Connolly. Weekdays at 5 on ESPN. Marshall and Toledo in the MAC Conference Championship game. First down and 10 for Toledo at its own 20 yard line. MAC teams over the last couple of years have served notice that. They can play against the bigs in college football. This is Bolden on the sneak. And he slips and falls forward. He goes to the 28-yard line. And mention the success of MAC teams against, let's say, the Big Ten, like against Penn State last year, early September. Chester Taylor into the end zone, leading the way as, yeah, they defeated Penn State impressively. Amstutz then the defensive coordinator. Celebrating in kind. Hey, it's great to be passionate, man. They beat Minnesota this year to open the season, too. That's Taylor running over the left side, getting about four. Yates making the stop. You've got to be careful when you schedule these MAC teams now, Chris. Well, I, I'll tell you what's helped them, Mark. Is first of all, you know the exposure that they get on ESPN and ESPN2 want plus 85 scholarships, so they're getting the tweeners where the guys that normally would have went to a bigger school not come to max schools and they build great programs with great players. Very symbolic of the parody now in college football. And stopped up in the backfield was Taylor. Number 34, Ralph Street, the first to say hello. Coach tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN. Joe Pond looks to add to his Division I all-time wins record and clinch a bull bid as the Nittany Lions travel to Virginia to take on the Cavaliers. Zach Mills is healthy again and back in running that option and throwing well, too. Second down and 12. Bolden to Taylor. And a nice tackle in the open space at the 30-yard line by Tarpley. I know you like that one. Chris. <laughs> that was a great tackle, and what I liked better was his burst and break on the football. Now, Tavares Bolden does a nice job of going to his outlet receiver, Chester Taylor, right here. Almost missed him, but he got enough of him to get him down. That's a tough guy to bring down in the open field. Chester Taylor can make you miss, or he can run over you. Third down and 13. A trips left formation, three receivers out to the left of Bolden. And one of four on third down tonight. McCray in motion. 
A blitz off the corner. McCray wide open. And he has a first down at the 42-yard line. Check that. It's going to be just a little bit short, actually. A stop by Tarpley. Yeah, it's almost guaranteed with this Marshall defense that you are going to get some kind of pressure on third and long with the idea of make them throw the ball in front of you. Tackle them, get off the field. Now, you got a decision to make here. Do you want to go for it or do you kick it away? They're going to talk about it. They've tried already once on fourth down and failed. But that was a little different situation, Chris. That's when they were on the other side of midfield. We have a timeout down in the field. Toledo tells it, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Somewhere out there, your team is taking the court. And you can be there coast to coast. Now, Sports in Demand brings your team home. With NBA League Pass on digital cable, you can choose from up to 40 out-of-market games a week. Call now to lock in a special low price. You can either fly to a different city every night or pocket the airfare and get NBA League Pass. Don't miss your chance to order this ultimate basketball package. Call now. It's stuck in the cold? Stock up on heat, gas line, antifreeze from Menards. It's America's number one choice. A four-pack is $1.96. Premium ISO heat absorbs five times more water for fast starts year-round. A four-pack is $2.76. Stock up on Panasonic Alkaline batteries. Choose from four packs of double or triple A's, two packs of C's or B's, or single nine volts. 49 cents after rebate. Get a charge out of saving at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Football Saturday at 7.45. It's the SEC West Championship game. The Auburn D travels to Death Valley to try to stop Rohan Davey and LSU. At 8, Brandon Doman and number 7 BYU aim to keep their undefeated season and BCS hopes alive against a much improved Mississippi State team. Doman keeps it himself and scores a touchdown. Auburn, LSU at 7.45 on ESPN. BYU, Mississippi State at 8 on ESPN2. Saturday. Back at the glass bowl, I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe down on the sidelines. This offense for Toledo shut out so far. And Rob Spence, his offensive coordinator, they had some Louisiana Tech lineage. But it's not exactly the same type of spread offense that they run at Louisiana Tech. 0-1 on fourth down tonight. Yeah, the reason is because you have a great running back in Chester Taylor. You want to keep him in the offense and running the ball as much as possible. This is a huge down. Now they come with a jumbo formation. A little on balance line. You see right there, that's an offensive tackle. Lined up as a tight end. Taylor, seven yards deep. Out of the offset eye. Hit the hole and got the first down and then some out to the 46 yard line. So, one of two now on first down. Yeah, uh, you know, as a defender, and, and seeing that formation before, you know that the ball's going to go that way. Why? Because you have an offensive tack lined up by the tight end right here. See him right there? He's a little slow getting off the ball. Does a good job of sealing off the blitzer. And Chester Taylor shows why he's a tough guy where he can run into it. And Rob Spence, the offensive coordinator. Coach Amstutz phoned him up and recruited him just like he would any other player. Get him to come to Toledo. Taylor again, this time getting about two to the 48-yard line. Orlando Washington making the stop on the play. They're trying to get Chuck Taylor involved in the ball game. You surprised he's been a non-factor so far? A little bit, but they're down 23 nothing, so they're limited in the play calls that they use for them. And if Orlando Washington can handle one-on-one -on -one blocks like that, then he's not going to be a factor in the ball game. Second down and eight. Complete to Dante Green. There's a knock to the bounds and a late hit. A late flag coming just where Green was tackled. And it's against Marshall. The logistics of this no huddle is pretty intricate and sometimes complicated, Chris, isn't it? Yeah, here you go. Here, Rob Spence, he tells the, the what the play is to him. Now, he's going to single in to the skilled players into the quarterback who will get the play then the quarterback's going to tell the offensive line either which way to run block or the pass protection so it's a three-way cycle they work on that it works with see there's the signals look at that now, which guy's like i don't 
don't know which guy's live, but you got 18 guys over there with their hands playing. <laughs> but Tavares Bolt knows which guy's live, so he's got to tell everybody else. He's telling his line now. Okay, run this way or pass pro this way. First down and 10. Let's see what the call was. Little toss to Taylor. Slipped and regained his balance, falling forward to the 26-yard line. Chris, it looked like a bunch of uh, overworked traffic cops there. A, or a bunch of, of retired male cheerleaders. <laughs> Right there, Rob Spencer. Hey, okay, let me check my chart. I'm gonna go with this. Now I'm gonna throw, okay, I'll tell you guys now. You guys do your hand signals, give it to Tavares. Tavares, let him know what's happening. And only two of those guys signaling are live. The other two are AKA dummies. Tenth play of the drive. And this is Carl Ford, still on his Five. feet. Touchdown, Toledo. That's what Toledo needed. They needed a big play, and they get one from Ford. And Tavares Bolton, who seems to be getting his timing back. A great job by their offensive lineman getting out there and clearing the path. And, Tavares, and Ford making people miss. And he made one of the best tacklers in the match miss in Max Yates. Ford with a big week last week against Bowling Green. 103 yards receiving, and the first big play of the game offensively for Toledo here. Extra point right between the bikes and the Rockets. Finally off the launch pad. Courtesy of Carl Ford. The signals got into the right people. Obviously the right play. Toledo trails when we come back. We're here pitting the new Dremel Advantage rotary saw against the competition to see which tool best handles all sawing conditions. Unlike some others, the Dremel Advantage hugs the curve. Its powerful motor blasts through tile and other tough surfaces. Yet, its unique variable speed adjustment handles everything from plexiglass to laminates and drywall. And with 35,000 RPM, it'll slice through materials up to one inch thick. So no matter what you're cutting, you always win. The new Dremel Advantage. Drive the power. Filter for when you feel the heat. Get refreshment down cold. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Grandma. Ace Combat 4, rated E for everyone. You want to translate on that? Yeah, what he's doing is telling his offensive lineman that he's leaving the double team too quick and letting the defensive lineman get penetration. He's saying staying on the double a little bit longer, get some push down the field on the defensive lineman, then go to the next level. How's that for translation? I'm on it, kid. I understand. I am on it tonight. I got it through six. Ship football, man. I love it. Toledo is finally on the scoreboard. After a sluggish, lethargic beginning. It's loose, and the Rockets recover. Brandon Hefflin pouncing on the loose ball. It's a turnabout, fair play. There's flags, too. Somebody's getting upset down there. Now, if that's a personal foul against Toledo, major mental error, keep your composure. Anybody, if it's a personal foul against anybody, that's a mental error. You gotta keep your composure. Interesting to note that earlier Marshall recovered the fumble on a kickoff by bouncing it off one of the Toledo players. This time Toledo recovers a loose ball on a kickoff as well. Dead ball, personal foul on the kicking team. Dead ball, personal foul on the receiving team. Offset, first down. Now why did he even call that? There's no, you know, no penalties. Okay, now they're giving a little dose of medicine. They get, get 
catch kick, high kick. Give it to a guy that has trouble handling the ball in a kickoff that's not used to handling the ball in a kickoff. Plus, it's in the wind. Right. So it looks like it's coming to you, but it's going backwards. It's kind of like a bad high frisbee toss. You know, it looks like it's coming to you, then it comes all the way back. That's like that kick is. Now they have the ball deep in Marshall territory. Chester Taylor running with a little more authority that time down to the 22. Yates making a stop on the play. One more look at that touchdown. And an interesting uh, screen or block, I guess you could call it that, Chris. Yeah, you'll see number 73, Matt Comer, come here. Here he comes in your picture right there. Keep your eye on him. Now watch what that skeet. Right here he is. Keep, oh, I'm covering my guy. Run, run, run. That way none of the Marshall guys can see him because Comer engulfed the board. He couldn't find him. Second down and five. It worked. Tackled by Max Yates again. Yeah, Max Yates is doing a great job right now. He's, he's showing me why he's a top linebacker in the Mac, defeating the block, getting rid of the blocker, then making the tackle, not giving up one for one. The way to be a player, Max. Third down and three now for Toledo. That's a manageable third down, Mark. This is what they want to be in. A lot of two tight end offense. Kind of not the big spread that we were expecting. It's a lot of two tights. Power offense to get Chuck Taylor in the ball game. Yeah, interesting look. They've been running it. Third and three. And Bolden wants to talk it over. They did a good job of recognizing that the play clock was going down. Hit that timeout. Good job of recognition. Tavares Bolden, second team all Mid-American Conference this year. Last year he was first team. Trying to prove that maybe he should have been on the first one when we come back. class institution. UT was the best choice that I could have made. The studies we're performing in the lab will help patients with Alzheimer's disease. We not only have wonderful facilities, we also have great faculty. They actually care about you. There honestly is something for everyone here. I know this school is going to make me successful in what I do later on. I think that it was a very good decision for me to come to the University of Toledo. I love it. Well, the temperature dropping here just a little bit in Toledo, Ohio. Fans keep it warm around the charcoal. For a couple burgers on that bad boy, and uh, I'm not sure what exactly is happening down in the field. A little bit of a mist or rain. It's seemingly swirling a little bit. It doesn't even look, it's so light, it doesn't even look like it's coming down on the ground. That might have wreaked havoc on that last kickoff. As you mentioned, that Kirby analogy, it kind of hung up there and curved on Marshall. Third and short, Taylor. It's going to be close, extremely close. Well, he's running with purpose and intent right now. He wants to get in this ball game. Shows why he's a strong NFL candidate. Why? Because he's got power inside. Not being a, a, a huge guy, he still runs with great power. And he runs behind his pads. Chester Taylor came back for his senior season. There was some thought that he might make himself eligible for the NFL draft. Graduated already with a degree in sports management and has come back to pursue a second degree in recreation. He's already accepted an invitation to play in the Hula Bowl as well. And they got the first down. Courtesy of Chester Taylor. And Coach Amstead told his mom that if Chester comes to Toledo, I guarantee you he'll get his degree. And both of them kept their work. There you see the power. Look at him, keep driving. That's a good job by these guys keeping their feet moving. All those guys are keeping their feet moving. It's like anything in football, you always want to keep your feet moving. Never stop the feet. First down and 10. Bolden. Incomplete. Just out of the outstretched arms of Chris Holmes, the tight end. And it's one that the quarterback wishes he could have back. You know, that's three bootlegs they've ran the night, Mark, and three times they've run it to the quarterback's left, making him throw across his body. I don't know if they feel comfortable with running that way, but if, if you're going to run the bootleg, make give him the easier throw, roll him out to his right, and let him throw with his body. And I mentioned Bolden wishes he could have that one back missing by mere inches. 
He completed 69% of his passes on the year. Second down and 10. Golden incomplete. Johnson, his intended receiver in the end zone. Tavares needs to check his shoes because what's happening, every time he goes to set it up, he's slipping with his plant foot. So then again, now he has to readjust his feet, which is kind of throwing off his timing because every time he plants the set, he's slipping. So his timing's off. And you get the long ones on. You know those long ones like Holly showed us? Get right. the long ones on, Tavares. 345 to play in the first half. Third down and 10. An empty formation, five receivers. Guys on the play. We got a little jumpy down there in that offensive line. What's happening with the footing down there? Well, right now, Tavares Bolton does have those longer cleats on that I showed you, but those are the ones that are not being as effective. It's those shorter ones that are like a cone that will grab the turf who seem to be stopping the slipping of these guys. But right now, that mist that's going across the stadium is falling to the field, and it's making this turf very slippery, guys. Yeah, I meant the longer rubber ones. Oh, okay. There's short rubber ones and there's longer rubber ones, and there's a stick feet. You need the long rubber ones on all about the shoes sometimes, third and 15. Bolden stays on his feet and hits green down to the five-yard line. And he is right at the first down marker. Now that time he kept his composure, Mark. He stayed in the pocket and let green come and get open across the middle and he delivered the football. Right here, you'll see his eyes look downfield. His eyes don't go to run, his eyes go to pass. And the key was he was able to stay upright and not slip. Yeah. See, gets a good plant. Let's see, there's a good plant. He plants his feet. Nice job. Good job in the truck, boys. Very good. Nice job. That time he was able to get his footing and make a decision. The timing wasn't off. A 16-yard pickup, first and goal for the Rockets. Taylor met by number five, Yates, right in the hole. Nice shot, Max. He was bringing some bad intentions that time. He was, and he put, I tell you, it was a great tackle. Why? Because he kept his head up. He put his face mask right under the chin of Chester Taylor. Bam! And what's his feet do? His feet keep moving. I love to see that when a guy keeps his feet moving. Oftentimes, you see guys tackle, they stop their feet. Not that guy. Max Shakes kept his feet moving. Made a great hit. Voted the best hitter in the map a year ago. Second down and goal. The play fake, incomplete. Bolden under pressure that time, barely got it away, intended for Clark to tie in. Yeah, the pressure forced him to rush the pass a little bit because Clark was open in the corner, but the Ferris had to elude the rush. So right there, Steins forcing him to readjust. Now that ball's got to be caught. In my opinion, that ball's got to be caught. He does a good job of avoiding the rush. Let's see if it hits his hands. Yeah, uh, touch his hands, number one rule. The ball touches your hands, your receiver, you gotta catch the football. He was thinking about getting his feet up. Yeah, well, you gotta catch the ball, too. Number one. Third and goal. Taylor tackled. And he's short of the first down, short of the touchdown. Washington leading the surge of her defenders. And it'll be fourth down and goal. Yeah, you gotta get points on the board. You're in the red area, you gotta score in the red area. Got to put points on the board. Go for the field goal. Tom France coming into the game. All Mac honorable mention this year. 10 of 15 on the season. With a long of 55. And he's a guy that works at it. First one in practice, last one in the league. Keep in mind that Bolden, the quarterback, is the holder. This one from 23 yards out. He knocks it through, so Toledo, the Rockets, after trailing 23 to nothing, have answered with 10 unanswered points. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Mark, coming up on Sports Center in game at the half, do you remember all of those classic Michael Jordan against the Pat Riley team's confrontations? It's not classic, but they are squaring off again. Rod, Mark, and I will discuss the Big 12 championship game between Texas and Colorado, and also look ahead to bowl season. Who's going where? Who needs a little bit of help, and who needs to help themselves? We'll see you at the half. 
All right, Reese. Bob Pruitt's team in the lead right now, 23 to 10. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe, here with the MAC Conference Championship game. Marshall ranked number 18 in the country against Toledo at the Glass Bowl. The stadium built originally in 1937 in intimate surroundings today in a very enthusiastic crowd on a wet, cold day. Mark, interesting note, in the first quarter, Marshall had the ball for 32 plays to Toledo six. Now, what Toledo have to do to counteract that? Well, in the second quarter, Toledo's had the ball for 32 offensive plays to Marshall's three. But now we get to see the big fella, Byron Leftwich, in a two-minute situation. This is where he could excel. He has really excelled passing 188 yards today. The wind played tricks on Marshall on the last kickoff. This time it's split. And cut. And brought down at the 32-yard line is number 32, Todd Bugs. The backup tailback. Byron Leftwich already today with two touchdown passes and 188 yards passing. Chris early in the first quarter and midway through the second, he was red hot. Well, I'll tell you, Mark, I, I like his composure. He looks back, he surveys the field, reads the defense, gets what play he wants, receivers tell them where to go, then he delivers strikes. He hasn't had the ball much, though, in the second period. 0 of 2 in the second quarter. And he completes his first pass of the period to Josh Davis at the 34. And he is now the Mac all-time single-season passing leader. 299 completions. That's an incredible stat right there. That's a, one of only many records that I'm sure Byron State in school will break. For Mac Records as a quarterback. Second down and seven. Incomplete behind his intended receiver. Daniels in on the coverage that time. Back to left, which he came to Marshall, Chris. 6'3, 190 pounds. To say he's grown would be an understatement. <laughs> He's really filled out now. Yeah, and a thing, too, Mark, that he did grow not only in height, but in weight, and he didn't lose any of his athletic ability. In fact, in my opinion, he's gained athletic ability. He's got such a strong arm. He's a great presence, not only his size, but his confidence out on the field, and his teammates draw off of that. Third and seven. Leftwich fires behind his intended receiver on the slant. That was Curtis Jones. And they'll have to punt. One of the few times today, it's three and out for Leftwich. Well, that time Leftwich looked like that was a, a, a flat route with a quick slant. Now, he looked at the flat route a little bit too long before he delivered the quick slant. He's got to go the quick slant, then to the flat route. Got to go the deeper route first, then your second outlet route, which is the flat route. So they're going to get the ball back. Head, his last punt going 75 yards. This one coming down to the 14. Dante Green still on his feet. An 18-yard return out to the 32 after that 52-yard boot. There's a flag down back at the 17-yard line. Yeah, you know, not smart football. Now, I'm telling you, if a guy on punt coverage is in front of you, you do not hit him in the back. That time, Dodgeville hit the guy right in the back, right in front of the referee. If you are going to hit the guy in the back, then you hit him when the referee's not looking. And if you hit him in the back, then you put your hands up and belly bump him. Sounds logical to me. Tomorrow, folks, at Push in the back on the return team, half the distance to the goal, first down. What else? College football, more for you. An SEC West showdown. Rohan Davey and LSU taking on the Auburn Tigers at 7.45 Eastern time. Keep an eye on number six for the Tigers. Josh Reed, don't forget about him, leads the nation 149 yards receiving per game. Information, log on to ESPN.com. I'm not advocating hitting anybody in the back, by the way. Oh, uh, <laughs> of course. Uh, that goes without saying. <laughs> okay. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> Marshall with two timeouts remaining. Toledo with one. 98 yards away from the end zone. Josh Cordell right there to meet Chester Taylor. 
you've got nose guards that can handle center one on one like Cordell did, you're going to take away the run. That was a great job. He knocked the center back, disposed of him, and made the tackle. Not only defending his responsibility in the A gap, but delivering the center into the A gap and taking care of the cutback. Don't forget Sports Center in game coming up next at halftime. Reese Davis, Mark May, and Rodney Gilmore are breaking down the bowl scenario picture for you. And the BCS standard, second down and 11. McCray, who's done an admirable job running the ball in place of Taylor at times today, to the 18. Owens making the tackle. And that'll be the last play of a very interesting first half. The first period controlled by Byron Leftwich and the Herd offense. They're looking for their fifth consecutive MAC title. Right now, let's go back to Reese in the studio. Mark, thank you. Maybe Marshall getting a little of its own medicine two years ago. They fell behind 23-0, came back to beat Western Michigan. Ahead 23-0 this time, Toledo right. back in the game. Hmm. Isn't it nice when a plan all comes <laughs> together like that? We'll try to make it do so as Michael Jordan's plan goes in against Pat Riley in the Heat. They've lost 10 strengths. If MJ can make it 11, and uh, you want me to get that? Texas would like Benson to get it. Sunday NFL Countdown, Sunday mornings at 11 Eastern, only on ESPN. <laughs> you can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip and chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. It's different down here. EA Sports. It's in a game. Rated E for everyone. Let's get that home equity loan. It's the Hendersons. Get him a great deal. Go. One bank's compete for your home equity loan at LendingTree.com. Fill out one simple form and get up to four offers. When banks compete, you win at LendingTree.com. Share the gift of Stetson. Sunday at 7, 6 Central, Gail Sayers was destined to dominate the game. Brian Bigelow had other ideas. I'm going to blow you out of the line. Uh -huh. They were rivals. Teammates. Friends. Two players. One goal. Never give up. Brian Song, Sunday, 7, 6 Central on ABC. Welcome to Sports Center in Game. Marshall with a 23-10 lead on Toledo at the half of the MAC Championship game. Glad to have you with us on Sports Center in Game, the halftime report. No championships on the line for the Wizards or the Heat, but Michael Jordan, perhaps with help on the way. Charles Barkley says he might be willing. Shaved 25 more pounds off that 290-pound frame. It's unclear whether Michael has asked for Charles's help, even though Charles has offered it. Wizards and the Heat. The Heat lost 10 straight games, longest losing streak. Pat Riley's career there. Michael Jordan, there's Pat. Hair still the same as it was when he used to win. First quarter, Washington up five. Here is MJ. Perhaps the only wizard among mere muggles, Rod. Yeah, the rest of them have got to be muggles. He's the wizard, right? He is, he is the wizard. Number 23, Fade Fire fill it over the Fonz. That was his fourth straight field goal. Still in the first quarter. Washington up by a half dozen in the Fonz. Can't keep up with the 38-year-old. And one. Jordan had a dozen in the first quarter. Wizards up by eight. But the Heat is now rallied 64-62. Washington trying to win back-to-back -back games for just the second time this season while Riley tries to end that 10-game losing streak. Elsewhere in the NBA, Pistons over the Hornets by 10. Charlotte won two straight entering this one. Detroit on an NBA record low. 18 rebounds last night. Working the glass a little bit better in this one. Over 25 already. 
go to the ice now. Devils. Red Wings, Brendan Shanahan. Down low to Sergei Fedorov. And Sergei puts it home past Martin Brodeur. And the Wings up 1-0. Second period. Detroit on the power play. Stevie Y. Up to Tomas Holstrom. And Eiserman feeding nicely. Holmstrom feeding the net. And the Red Wings with a 2-0 lead. It's 2-1 now. Frederick Olison will get it to Boyd Devereaux. And Brodeur is there to Stoning this time. But... Is that you, Igor? Igor Larianov found Devereaux, and Red Wings got another one. They're putting it on Brodeur at the moment. 3-1. They have skated through 40 minutes of hockey. One more period left to go. Detroit unbeaten in its last eight games. Off to college hoops now. Who, who is your Mac Daddy in basketball? What do you think, guys? I'm thinking Ball State. Ball State. Ball State, Ball State already with wins over Kansas and UCLA. This is their first one since losing to Duke. Up by 40 on Elon. Tim Buckley's crew about to finish off a victory. And Indiana University, Purdue University at Fort Wayne, 13 points short of Michigan State. Marcus Taylor, 16 points to face the Spartans, who had four guys in double figures. And back to college football now, and Bob Davey is still the head football coach at Notre Dame. A blue and gold illustrated report, that is a magazine which covers the Irish, reports that Davey will be fired after the Purdue game tomorrow. Davey was more than a little chat about this report saying he hadn't heard of it and then saying quote this is notre dame i believe in its integrity and honesty it might happen somewhere else but not here maybe not sounding as if he expects to get the axe rumors have been running rampant about that certainly keep an eye on it for you but davy not believing that there is one so far bob davy still coach at notre dame byron leftwich still quarterback at marshall there's your Mac Daddy. There's your Mac Daddy in football, at least so far, 23-10 at the half. She'll definitely show. Just do it. I'm going to make a collect call. 1-800-COLLECT presents Ava Sabalot. Culture. Careful how you dial, boys. Ava, we always use 1-800-COLLECT. Then you already know it saves at least a buck or two. Of course. It's so easy. Thought you had a call to make. Talk about saving some dough. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Hey, Bob, why don't we hang out inside the museum? Skate where there are no limits. Introducing ESPN X Games Skateboarding for PlayStation 2. With mind-blowing fantasy levels. Plus authentic X Games competition with eight pro skaters and over 40 intense tricks. Skateboarding as you know it is now extinct. Ready to be for everyone. Last week on Sunday NFL Countdown. It's fun to block when you get the bus yeah. rumbling behind yeah. you. This week, get up close with the Ravens' top motivator, Shannon Sharp. Herman Edwards' stingy D has pushed the Jets to number one in the AFC East. You have a good defense. You can score some points. And it's all in the grip. See how the NFL's top quarterbacks handle the ball. Plus, previews from all around the league. Get all your NFL news and pregame analysis first with Sunday NFL Countdown, beginning 11 a.m. Sunday on ESPN. This is Sports Center in game. We mentioned on College Game Day the pregame of the version of how this sort of feels like a January 1st from our childhood when everybody's playing a huge game and everybody is looking around the country to see how everything falls as far as the BCS implications go and who makes it to the Rose Bowl. Texas needs a little bit of help. They will have a rematch with Colorado in the Big 12 championship game. It's not the rematch we expected, but one certainly Colorado expected to get to. The Buffs had a ceramic replica of Texas Stadium made, and they stuck a decal of all of the teams they defeated on it as they went along. There is no Texas decal on it. They got rolled by the Longhorns, but really, Mark, you look at both of these teams, clearly Colorado is a much different team than when they played Texas, but the Longhorns are different from what they were early in the season as well. And the key is they're multidimensional on offense now, and it's the running game of Cedric Benson that has really added another dimension to this offense. His ability to hit the hole and run downfield and downhill has changed this offense. Here you're going to see him take the ball. He goes off the right side, powers over tacklers, and runs for the 24-yard game. But it's not only that. It's his ability to read the defense and lower his shoulders and come up with a big place, which has helped this offense progress. Now, Chris Sims, early in the season, keep an eye on his feet. Watch his feet. They're not set when he throws the ball. He's not comfortable throwing the ball. He doesn't have a rhythm with the offense. Here again, he tries to throw the ball and underthrows his wide receivers. But with a rushing attack of Benson, it puts him in second down 
down in shorter situations. Now watch him in the pocket. He'll stand tall, plant the feet, and throw the ball vertically downfield to split the defenders. Here on another play, he's going to hit his wide receiver in stride in the touchdown. Sloan Thomas here for the long touchdown pass. That's the other dimension that's been added to this offense, and that's why I think if you look at the Texas Longhorn offense now, it's a much different offense than they were obviously when they play the Oklahoma Sooners. But obviously this is also a different offense when they played Colorado the first time. And I think this is an offense that if they're backed up guys and they have to throw the ball, they can throw the ball a lot better than Colorado's offense can. They do a great job of running the ball, but if Texas has to throw the ball, I think Texas will win this game because of their ability to go downfield with the football. Yeah, 16 touchdowns, two interceptions since that debacle of a game that Sims had against Oklahoma. They've been much improved. He said that since that game, they've sort of regained a little bit of offensive swagger. Certainly that is something that Florida is never lacking under Steve Spurrier. Phil Fulmer, since he became the head coach of the Volunteers, 13 losses, seven of them to Spurrier. It's gotten in some of the Vols' heads at least a little bit. Albert Hainsworth said it's not about beating Florida. It's about beating Spurrier. He's the brain of the offense. We have to make him frustrated. But, Rod, you think maybe the key to this game is on the other side of the ball. Well, I really think that when you think about Tennessee's offense, they've got to protect Casey Clawson. They've got a real problem, too, because Alex Brown is going to be coming after him. And the only way Tennessee can deal with him is to find a way to double him. Alex Brown has ten and a half sacks this season. He had five against these guys two years ago when they played at Gainesville. And that's the key. They're going to be playing in a place where the noise will be loud. A young quarterback who will have trouble with the crowd, the offensive line will not be able to hear. In that kind of a situation, a speedy pass rusher like Brown can wreak havoc in the backfield. If he's able to do that, then Tennessee's offense will just go straight down and Florida will control the ball game. And Florida controls its destiny according to our BCS experts. They assure us the Gators went out. They will be going to the Rose Bowl to play for the national championship. But of course, winning out entails winning the SEC championship game as well. And the game against Tennessee is only for the East. The game for the SEC West title will be in Baton Rouge tomorrow night. You can see it on ESPN, 7.45 Eastern Time. Auburn and LSU. Auburn seemed to have this thing wrapped up just a few weeks ago. Had a couple of implosions against Arkansas and most notably against Alabama. They will try to rebound and rekindle some of the magic that Tommy Tuberville's had over the Tigers. Four and two all time against LSU. Adrian Karsten will be down there to help us report on the game. Adrian, what do you have for us? The North End Zone here at Tiger Stadium, perhaps the most intimidating student section in all of college football. Some of the most memorable plays in college football history have happened right down here. Now, for the first time in 28 years, the regular season ends in Baton Rouge with championship implications. You know, when the sun goes down on the Delta, the atmosphere here is like none other. I've never been in place, uh, any place, NFL, college, whatever, you know, like it was at the Tennessee game last year, the old Mississippi State game last year, Alabama game last year, and I'm sure it'll be that way for this game, but I think it's important for us to play well, too. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. When you're down in that north end zone and you're the opposing team, I don't even think you can hear your heartbeat. You can't hear yourself think. And the crowd's going to be a big factor, but like Coach say, it's going to be us up to us on the field and we have to get it done you know this game was originally supposed to be played on september 15th following the attack on america but nick saban said there is no tragedy that can take away the tradition the pageantry the passion that we all have for a college football game like this adrian thanks there's no question about that tiger stadium certainly one of the great venues in college football but it is the first time in 28 years that it has hosted a game that will decide a conference championship, or in this case, a division title. Now, LSU lost that one, too, back in 1973, 21-7 Alabama. They'll be trying to reverse a little bit of history. Toledo tried to reverse its early fate after Franklin Wallace went to the house on us back to a 23-10 game. Put your trust in tradition and service. Jack's Incorporated of Berwyn continues its quality, performance, and dependability guarantee in construction, industrial, and municipal equipment. Offering rentals, sales, and service, we're the right choice. Carhartt products, they're rugged and reliable, setting the standard in workwear. Carhartt's customers are the backbone of America, and we here at Jack's are proud to carry the Carhartt line of products for our hardworking customers. Experience true customer service. Jack's Incorporated, family owned and serving you for over 35 years. If you like it, get it at Broadway Home Furnishings. Contemporary designs at affordable prices. Living room sets, dining room sets, bedroom sets, 
and more. Three lovable locations. If you like it, get it at Broadway Home Furnishings. Back on Sports Center in game halftime report, and a lot of teams are sitting around right now trying to figure out exactly where they're going to be in the postseason, waiting on the BCS fallout, who goes to the Rose Bowl, other teams earning the at-large BCS bids, but some we already know about. Five matchups set now for our bowl coverage, and GMAC filling things out with East Carolina and Marshall. East Carolina accepting the big and the thundering herd team that you're watching tonight will be down in Mobile to play as well. USC with a nice late season rally going to Las Vegas to take on Utah and Stanford going to Seattle. Now there are other teams that still need to do some work this weekend in order to become bowl eligible. Some of these teams guaranteed bids if they win. Others or in a hope mode. If Pittsburgh wins over UAB, they will go to the Tangerine Bowl, and uh, we'll see how the others play out. A couple others have guaranteed bids, but guys, it kind of creates a, a unique atmosphere, and it's a desperate one. In some cases, these teams need to get in a bowl for many reasons other than to just say, I went to a bowl. And to say, you know, not more than just feeling good about themselves. When I look at Oregon State and Penn State, those two teams need to get into a bowl for next season. One, they need practice time for young quarterbacks they will be developing for next season, such as Zach Mills. He needs more time for Penn State to get ready for for carrying a team next year. In addition to that, don't forget about the dark period in recruiting. Mid-December, early January, coaches can't go see recruits. But if their team is practicing, they can call them. If they're playing the bowl game, they can see them, and that will help them. So for next year, those teams need to get the bowls. My concern are three teams that have already accepted bowl bids, Washington, Toledo, and Louisville. After, their, after the games that they accepted the bowl bids, they went out and laid an egg the following week. My biggest concern is you play for pride, you play for respect, you play for your school, and when you go out on the football field, you always play to protect yourself. In certain situations, after they accepted their bowl bids, they laid an egg the following week, and their teams and players did not protect, protect themselves, and my concern is for injury, guys. And coach some guys up for this Saturday, you huh? You've got to coach them up for coach every game. Up. Every game, you've got to play for pride, and I think some of these teams went out there and said, we've already accepted our bowl invitations. Let's just go out and stay healthy and get to the bowl games. Yeah, you've got to wonder about the mindset sometimes of these teams, and if something goes well for a couple of teams that already have their postseason settled, and the team that doesn't have it go well for them, if they say, oh, well, let it go. Can't do that, though, right? Yeah. Can't, do, Can't that. do that. These two teams have their postseason plans all settled, but they're playing tough. Toledo trying to rally after falling down 23 to nothing. Marshall still hanging on. Blockbuster had all the new games? Guaranteed to be there, not believers. Dude, watch the Ottoman. Ottoman? Gentlemen, today's training is all about guarantees. See, Blockbuster has more copies than ever before. That way they can guarantee games like WWF Smackdown, Tony Hawk 3. When'd you get a cat? And Metal Gear Solid 2, all guaranteed to be there. Mmm. Mmm. It really tastes of cheese. Games guaranteed. Blockbuster. Are you game enough? on ESPN. BYU, Mississippi State at 8 on ESPN 2. Saturday. Sports Center coming up after the game. John Anderson and Linda Cohn. The Irish, are they out of luck? Are they out of a coach? John and Linda will have the latest on that. Should Michael Jordan be traded? He could trade himself and then come back and uh, it's too complicated. I'll let them do it. It follows Marshall and Toledo. Good second half coming up. After. time of year, you're doing a lot of run, run, running around. Chevrolet can help by making your time and money count. For the year-end event, Chevrolet has extended 0% financing on almost every new Chevy car. That's 0% financing on select Chevy cars. Run, 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 run. Enough with the run around. Go straight to your local Chevy dealer and make your money count.
He understands still for me back. Well, did he get the phone back? The third truckload this week. Yeah, great deal. You get the bonus pack, $49.99, after a $30 rebate. Plus, now you can get 5,000 minutes for just $39.99 a month. Can't keep them on the shelf. Was there a pink doll on that shipping order? Nope. Hey, did we give it to Bruno? Get the Prime Co. bonus pack, and now get 5,000 minutes a month for just $39.99. Call 1-800-PRIME-CO. I think we've got a really good match here. A look at downtown City Hall in Toledo, Ohio, but right now most of the activity happening right here at the Glass Bowl. Number 18, Marshall, leading Toledo by a score of 23 to 10. Holly Rowe now joined by the coach. Coach, your team got off to a little bit of a slow start, but they never seemed to give up. They really owned that second quarter. Yeah, we, we're starting to come back in this ball game. We got to keep on playing better on defense. Uh, we can, we can, uh, if, uh, if we get that ball back again, get some uh, turnovers. Our offense has a chance to put some points on the board. We have a chance. What do you do to get Chester Taylor more involved? Uh, we'll get, we'll get Chester the ball this half. Thank you, Coach. Okay. All right, Holly. Of course, Toledo with a 13-game winning streak here at the Glass Bowl, and things certainly did turn around for them in that second period. But Chris, so far, one of the stories of the game, the run defense of Marshall so far holding up. And yeah, they've been able to contain Chester Taylor. And all they had to do with the 23 to nothing score, Mark, if you're able to get up like that, you limit the plays offensively, what you can do. The coach said, I'm gonna get Chester Taylor the ball. That's a wise decision. That's why he's the head coach, because he's got a great player. Get him the ball some way, somehow. By quarters, things really turning around. You saw the numbers, Bob Pruitt's team, jumping out to an early lead and uh, you know they really moved the ball well Byron left which really dealing a hot hand in the first period oh well, he was smoking hot you're right he was delivering the football making good decisions but you saw it was a tale of two quarters 16 first downs the first quarter for Marshall zero for Toledo to get back in the football game they needed to dominate the second quarter and that's exactly what they did Mark Jones Chris Spielman Holly Rowe on the field we are set for the second half kickoff of this MAC championship Toledo to receive. Dante Green at the four. Green out to the 34-yard line and a flag down back at the 23. What a rough play. The kickoffs tonight have been anything but routine. Kickoffs, we've seen two fumbles and the kicking team recover both times. There is a flag on the play. On the kicking team, face mask. I mean, on the kicking team, holding on the receiving team. Offset. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Some of the cogent points of the game left, which, as I mentioned, 191 yards passing, two touchdowns early. Yeah, Marriott's been a go-to guy for left, which right there you see 75 yards in receiving yards and two touchdowns. And then it was Carl Ford with a 26-yard touchdown catch and run. Their only touchdown of the game so far. They added a field goal to bring us to 23 to 10. First and 10 from the 33. Taylor following the pile out near the 40-yard line, a seven-yard gain. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, I had a chance to talk to Tavares Bolin at halftime and ask him about his footing. He said he did not change his shoes, and it really isn't a problem. He said he's just hurrying too fast. He said he wants to take his time with his footing and not play outside of himself. Look for him to calm down a little bit during the second half. Yeah, he does have, Holly, a very high football IQ. Extremely bright. Good decisions. Here's Taylor. Escaping from would be tacklers onto Marshall's side of midfield of the 48. Well, right away, you can tell there's a conscious effort to get Chester Taylor involved in the ball game. Talk about being patient and vision. 
It's a counter play. The guards are pulling. Chester makes a nice cut, keeps his feet underneath him, then shows a little burst. He wants to have a big second half, Mark. He realizes this is his last chance to win a MAC championship for UT. He's going to do everything he can. The senior looking to put an exclamation point on his season. And River Rouge out of the backfield. This is Green. Nice tackle out in space at midfield by Roberto Terrell. It was Terrell right there, number two, that last week had a big touchdown off an interception against Youngstown State. Went 76 yards the other way to seal the deal for the herd. And Roberto Terrell did a good job of sniffing that out, beating the block by Andrew Clark, the tight end. He's man-to-man -man on Terrell out there as far as blocking him. Didn't get it done. Terrell beating, read the play nicely, and made a good play. Good tackle, open field tackle. Second down and 10, green in motion. Bolden on the throwback. And Taylor has a host of blockers in front of him. Taylor down to the 26, first down. Chester Taylor, the all-time touchdown leader at Toledo with a big play. Right here is patience. You want to make a conscious effort to get Chester Taylor in the ball game. Good fake. Good read by Bolton, delivering the football. Lyman waiting, setting up, blocking downfield. Chester Taylor setting those blocks up, and getting yards and positive yards and falling forward after he gets hit. A little shuffle pass, and that was red. And red well. Dante Green stopped up by Chris Crocker. Crocker number 19 came into the game saying, hey, we know what's up. We know what the deal is. If we don't bottle up Chester Taylor, we have no chance of winning the game. And so far, the defense, the run defense, has done very well, Chris. Yeah, and Chris Crocker made a game-saving tackle last week against BG on fourth and one. That time he was in man-to-man -man coverage. That's why he was able to cover the shuffle pass so close on Dante Green. Second down and ten. Bray in the flat, dropped it. It'll be third down and ten now for Toledo. Again, it's good recognition by Bolden. Now he's letting the guys clear out downfield. Hey, let me get it to my running back in the open field. You got to bring that catch in because he did have room to run. Even when the play stopped, you see there's not a Marshall defender in the picture. Where's the Marshall? None. Zero. No Marshall defenders. He would have made some play. Good positive yards. Catch the ball. Number one rule. Catch it before you run. Third down and ten. Bolden going to take off. Brought down and brought down hard at the 17. About two yards short of the first down. Max Yates and Michael Owens, the linebackers, ganging up on the tackle. Looking at it, yeah, they're going to go for it. Fourth and short, two to go. Coming in with that jumbo offense, look for the unbalanced offensive line. Big number 65, Rudolph, the offensive Randolph coming in as offensive tackle. See, he's lined up at tight end. It'll be third time today that they've gone for it. They're one of two so far. Look for him to run that side. There you go, motion, hand the ball to Chester, off tackle. That's where they go. Taylor got the first down, and then some. Still up! Chester Taylor, touchdown! on defense since the second quarter Toledo's offense has really become untracked and they have found their groove what's the call is that excessive celebration yep it's against the Rockets yeah, that's it don't take the emotion out of the game take that penalty coach Amstutz I don't care it's emotional you're fighting your way back into the game take the penalty it did look rather sluggish Chris coming out of the game and falling behind 23 to nothing but this team is a different crew that began this contest. Grant 
Hawks now with a long extra point. And some 35 yards out, and the Toledo Rockets after trailing 23 to nothing now trail by just six points. Mark, we called the play. Why? Because they ran in the first half. Zach Randolph, offensive tackle, lined up a tight end. They went to the left and ended up scoring. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Lee, you can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip in chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. Climb every mountain on every street Follow every rainbow Here you'll find you. Now get any Yamaha ATV for just one dollar a day during Yamaha All-Terrain Value Days. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Chester Taylor lowering his shoulder, keeping his feet moving. Smith had a chance to make the tackle, then bring him down. Chester Taylor knows how to get in the end zone. He's got 58 career touchdowns. He smelled it. He got it. And Chris, since the first quarter, there have been 14 first downs for Toledo to none for Marshall. That tells the story of how the tide has turned here. First down and 10 for Leftwich. Going up top. on Toledo and their crowd and sees back the momentum as they go for the two-point conversion. Leftwich fires incomplete. 
for Watts. Janeiro Marriott with his third touchdown of the night. Leftwich's third touchdown pass of the night. You got a horse, you got a riding right here. Big time ball right there. Janeiro Marriott, man, catches it in stride, finds the end zone. How do you think he liked it? Number seven says, it's okay, fellas. I got the herds back, all the way back. We live one block from the World Trade Center. When the second plane hit, I grabbed my daughter, covered her face, and we ran. My wife and son were a couple of blocks away going through the same thing. For weeks, I couldn't talk about it. The Red Cross helped my family, and they helped me. When I felt so alone, so despairing, they took the time to listen. They gave me that human touch. I will never forget them. Thank you, America, for helping Pascal Denoya. Hey, Hallie Eisenberg, drinking a Pepsi. Actually, this isn't a Pepsi. It's new Pepsi Twist with lemon. And I'm not Hallie Eisenberg. I'm Hallie Berry. Drinking Pepsi Twist. Well, it's not exactly Pepsi Twist. It's Diet Pepsi Twist. And I'm not exactly Hallie Berry. You know. I'm Barry Boswick. Who is Barry Boswick? Like twists? Training Pepsi Twist and regular and diet. A lemon twist on that great Pepsi taste. With quality tools from Delta and your own brand of inspiration, you can build most anything, including memories. Delta's table saw, scroll saw, and compound miter saw, specially priced for the holiday season. College football Saturday. It's the SEC West Championship. Auburn will try to stop Rohan Davey and LSU. Auburn, LSU, 745 Saturday on ESPN. Marshall, number 18 in the country, looking for its fifth consecutive MAC championship, leading 29 to 17. Tom Amstutz's team had seized the momentum back, trailing by only six until just moments ago. Green from the goal line. Still on his feet. Out of bounds at the 38-yard line. But Byron Leftwich, the big story of the game with career touchdown pass, number 58 just moments ago. One more look. See right here, Byron Leftwich, in order to make this pass, he's got to be confident in his line, and he knows he's going to take a hit. Delivers it to Daniro, Daniro Marriott in stride in stride which is key didn't have to break stride defender didn't have a chance and byron just a little skipped a little blue huh? <laughs> little victory jig i wouldn't even attempt that i got to blow about eight hamstrings out that's what i got <laughs> first and ten chester taylor had a touchdown run just moments ago this is number five mcgray and the running game now beginning to burge in a little strength for toledo and you know the thing about Toledo with this no huddle offense, Mark, they have to get in rhythm. And the more success they have, the better rhythm they get. They had a great first opening drive. They want to maintain that, keep that going for the second drive of the half. Look at the numbers in the second half. 125 yards to the ground for the Rockets. Taylor and McCray both doing a good job. McCray is there right now. The reverse to Green. Green is brought down at the 44-yard line by Michael Owens. Let's go to Holly. Guys, in a celebration after that long touchdown pass, Byron Leftwich made his way to the sideline. The first thing he did is seek out the defense and said, now you have to stop him. He was encouraging his teammates and said, we're straight, just give us the ball back. But the defensive line coach for Marshall right now concerned about how his team is tackling too high and not wrapping up their running back. He wants them to focus more on a target on their numbers tackle low. Taylor and McCray, both elusive targets, Holly. Second and four. They set up the screen to Taylor. And a couple of missed tackles later. Taylor down to the five. Brought down finally by Crocker. First and goal, Rockets. Yeah, with the 
door mark. He's getting all the Marshall defenders to run that way. All the screen defenders are defense line with the pump. He gets him to go one way, sneaks Chester Taylor out the other way, dumps the ball, and let Chester beat Chester. That means get the ball in his hands and let him do his magic. And he's doing it. A 38-yard pickup down to the five-yard line. First and goal for Toledo. McBray, the long back, a two-tight end formation. Ford split to the bottom of your screen. Johnson up top. Touchdown, McCray. Set up the touchdown, this screen pass. And Taylor worked his magic. Got it on the five-yard line, and then they punched it in. Yeah, Otterbacher not only got the key block on the touchdown run by knocking Max Shakes back in the end zone, also got the key block on the screen on Michael Owens, cutting off the inside pursuit where oftentimes the tackle comes from on the screen pass. Toledo four play, 61 yards, a little over a minute on the clock. So they answer with their own quick scoring drive. The understated, unemotional Bob Pruitt on the sidelines. 68 and 10 as head coach at Marshall. The herd looking for their fifth straight title, but it's not going to come easy if at all tonight. Curtis Jones out to the 35-yard line. Let's go to Holly. Guys, you really have to give this Toledo offense a lot of credit right now. This offensive huddle on the sideline, not that much different than when they were down 23 to nothing. They have had a very business-like attitude. I've never gotten the sense that they weren't believing in themselves that they could come back into this game. Right now, they're getting very loud, very boisterous, trying to cheer on their defense. All right, Holly. And Bolden and the rest of the gang on the sidelines following the lead of their head coach, Tom Amstutz, who had to mold a lot of different players and new coaches into a cohesive unit this year. Leftwich complete. Out to the 44-yard line. Nice catch by Marion. Folks, don't forget, coming up immediately after the game, Sports Center, John Anderson and Linda Cole will spell it out for you. The Irish, are they out of luck? And should MJ be traded? Interesting proposition there. And Chris Berman's two-minute drill, which actually is about three and a half minutes, I think. That's coming up next on Sports Center right after the ball game. Leftwich keeps it on the quarterback sneak. Up to the 46-yard line, and he gets the Marshall first down. Aaron Leftwich obviously did not forget the snub of last year when most people felt he should have been nominated to the all-conference team, was left off of it, but came back with a resounding result this year. That's no question in anybody's mind this year the way he's performed on a consistent basis all year. Offensive player of the year in the MAC, MVP of the MAC as well. First down and 10. Wallace. Up at the 48-yard line by Leo Frierson. 8.20 to play in the third period. That little counter draw that 
Marshall's used as a number one running play. Again, the depth of the tailback of the single back will tell you if it's run or pass. That blitz on second and seven. Wallace the back. He sets up shallow. Indicating a pass on second and seven. Incomplete intended to the near side. Watts. He's working on Anderson. Anderson with the pressure acting on the play. Third down and seven. Bob Pruitt, the former defensive coordinator at Florida for a couple of years. 13-0 two seasons ago. 10-1 this year. But facing their toughest challenge, perhaps, right now. Well, he knows he's in the dogfight. He's in the glass bowl. Bad memories of the glass bowl from a year ago. On third and seven. Leftwich picked off by number 15, Morris. His fourth pick of the year. Trying to force that one a little bit. Corey Morris has been a big time player for the Toledo Rocket defense all year. Gets a great read on the football. A great jump and makes a tough catch. Because that's a rocket. No pun intended. That Byron <laughs> left, which is thrown. And Corey Morris does a good job of securing the football. Cutting for the receiver. Making a great play. First and ten in good field position at the 42. Golden going to keep it himself. Wisely tiptoes out of bounds at the 45. As we watch Bolden scramble like that, keep in mind that last week he did not play in the loss against Bowling Green State because of back spasms. So far today, the back seemingly not a factor. He's not a factor now, but in the beginning of the game, I think him not playing was a factor, Mark. We noticed that his timing was off. The delivery of the football wasn't on time. It just looked like he wasn't comfortable. As he's gotten into the flow of the game, his play has improved. Second down and six. Taylor across midfield to the 48. It will set up a third down and short. Holly, what's up? last week they kept him out of the game and he had a very unusual rehab week this week he was in the swimming pool all week doing aquatic rehab therapy swimming running and doing everything he could in the water to loosen up the back they said he's feeling great in fact they pointed out before the game this guy's so tough he's not even wearing a shirt under his jersey in this freezing cold weather a few little back spasms aren't going to keep him out yeah you know another reason why they do it in the pool because it's less pounding on the body they've been looking good <laughs> Back holding up. A pass complete to number 26, Dante Green. Gain of a couple on the play. Crocker closing quickly to make the stop. Dante Green, the 5'7 junior. 11 receptions for 135 yards against Eastern Michigan this year. That was his high mark of the season. Second down and eight. Taylor nicely cutting back down to the 38-yard line and another first down. Smith making the tackle. Well, he's running hard this second half, realizing that he wasn't much of a factor in the first half. He, I bet you he went to Coach Amstutz and said, hey, give me the ball in the second half. I can be a factor. He's running downhill, Mark, and he's a dangerous runner when he gets those pads turned downhill. Look at the discrepancy between Toledo and Marshall since the first quarter. Incredible. That's that running game of Toledo. It's contributed to a lot of those yards. Give Toledo's defense credit, too. They've answered the challenge to Byron Leftwich since the first quarter. They did get the first down. Chester Taylor out of River Rouge, the big factor in the resurgence of that running game. Already a grad student. And this quarter, he has turned it on. He's run for 85 yards total in the game so far, and one of those a touchdown scamper right there. And of course, it was the screen pass moments ago that set up a recent score. He took this one down to the five. First down and ten. 
This is his understudy, McCray. Down to the 20. And another rocket first down. Terrell making the tackle. Yeah, I'm such a huge fan of the two backs that can keep going with the one-two punch. This looks like Chester Taylor, but it's McCray. Good job of blocking right there, knocking the Marshall defenders back. They're driving those guys downfield, giving seams to the running backs, and they're just picking their holes and bursting through it. First down and 10. Golden now audibly at the line. McCray on the run and chopped down at the 18-yard line. Good run support out the corner from Terrell. And down at the 17-yard line. That'll be seven to go. Terrell making a big play a week ago with a pick for a touchdown against Youngstown State. Second down in seven. Taylor inside, no gain on the play, tackled by Max Yates, plugging the hole. First team all Mac. Number five, Max Yates with another stop. Max Yates is a good football player. Let me tell you what Marshall did that time. To stop the run, okay, we're going to start blitzing. So they had three receivers to one side. What they did was brought Michael Owens off the short side of the field, number 31, right there. You see him coming in your picture? Forces the play, knowing that they're not going to throw to that side of the field because all the eligible receivers were on the other side of the field. That's a good job of recognition by the Marshall defense to call the blitz during that situation and a rundown situation. Five receivers on third down. Incomplete, intended for Johnson. Threw behind him that time. In comes the field goal, led by Tom Prince. Toledo dominating time of possession here in the third period with 4.32 to play. Mark, I just saw Tavares Golden talk to the coach, looked like he whispered something in his ear. Now, I'm not saying it's a fake. He is the holder, though. that's right. He was whispering to the coach, they told him something. Maybe, maybe just secure the ball and get a good hold, but you never know. 32-yard attempt. 32 yards out. Made his last one from 23. They fake it. France. Touchdown. Left I tell you. and they weren't whispering sweet nothings, obviously. And, and why I look for that, Mark, as a defender, you always look at the holder and see who he's talking to because he's the guy that starts to fake. Well executed, great call. You're down by five. The field goal doesn't do you much. Go ahead and take your shot. They took their shot. Guess what? It paid off. Touchdown. Toledo calls a timeout. They have two remaining. Marshall almost in a stunned state of disbelief right now. They once led 23 to nothing. It looked like a rout in the first quarter of the game. One more look at the touchdown run by Todd France. Yeah, Todd France, a good athlete for a kicker, running through there with a burst. Get in there, Todd. What do you mean for a kicker? Well, he's a great <laughs> athlete. Did he, you see that hit he hit on the goal post there? Watch the end of this. First of all, nobody touches him. They don't get him if it's flag football, but he shows great speed for a kicker. Now go, go hit the goal post. Watch your shoulder. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't hit your leg, Todd. Don't hit your leg. <laughs> It's not often those guys get a chance to run and especially run for six. He says, I want to hit something, boys. He's excited. He's got big eyes. What can I hit? I'm excited. Let me hit the goalpost. Kickers are supposed to be the smart guys, Mark. I think the goalpost won that battle. Yeah, the goalpost will always win the battle. Believe me, I've hit a few of them myself. I never won that battle. Todd France was lining up for a field goal, ran it in. And now Toledo will attempt a two-point conversion. Well, you got to go for two to make it a three-point game. Marshall have to kick the field goal to tie. The Rockets folks in the midst of a 30 to 6 run. The Rockets will go for two on the extra point. They obviously saw something.
toward the lone back. Now in motion. Now it's Green in motion. Bolden keeps it himself and gets the two. trigger on the big field goal attempt. The Toledo Rockets reborn, remade, and resurrected. They lead by three when we come back to the basketball. It's as easy as ABC. ABC Automotive Electronics, an authorized Verizon wireless dealer and Chicago's leader in car alarms, remote starts, car stereos, and accessories. Don't let the weather get you down. Beat the winter rush. Get your remote start package now, as low as $149.95 installed. Enjoy a mobile video package, as low as $399.95 installed. For car audio and security and all your Verizon wireless needs, it's as easy as ABC, ABC Automotive Electronics, with five convenient locations. ESPN, Sunday Night Football. As a player, you just can't wait to get to this day. And you snap every catch, all season long, from the people who do it best. We came at them outside. Get your Sunday Night Football fix from Joe, Mike, and Paul. ESPN Sunday Night Football, Sundays at 8.30, only on ESPN. Brought to you in part by Rock and Box Chevrolet on Route 120 at Grace Lake, the nation's number one new and used car operation. College football Saturday at 745. It's the SEC West Championship game. The Auburn D travels to Death Valley to try to stop Rohan Davey and LSU. At 8, Brandon Doman and number 7 BYU aim to keep their undefeated season at BCS Hopes Alive against a much improved Mississippi State team. Doman keeps it himself and scores a touchdown. Auburn, LSU at 745 on ESPN. BYU, Mississippi State at 8 on ESPN 2. Saturday. 2001 MAC Championship Game is brought to you by Tostitos Goops, the Dip Lovers Chip. A look at the art museum here on campus at the University of Toledo. Enrollment about 21,000, and boy, they are really excited about the works of their football team right now. They've taken a 32 to 29 lead. France, the place kicker on a big field goal, running into the end zone just a few moments ago. Plenty of football remaining. Toledo in the midst of a 30-6 run to take a three-point lead. One thing to take note, Mark, right now, Marshall has a win with them for their offense. So if they want to make the deeper throws, now's the time to do it while they have the win. Toledo will have the win in the fourth quarter. Got to make good use of it. And it hits another player. Kickoffs today have been anything but routine. And Bolden really surveyed the landscape before he made this call, didn't he? Yeah, before he even took down, he took a look and read the defense and let everybody know that the fake was on. Once everybody knows the fake's on, everybody's got to get the call. They all got the call. And France, you got to not run into the goalpost, Francie. <laughs> it's bigger than you. Go find another kicker to run into. He couldn't get out of the way, or what? Was it his <laughs> momentum? <laughs> no, he just wanted to hit somebody. He didn't get to hit. He's a kicker. He didn't hit much, Mark. Uh, first down and 10. Leftwich at the trigger. Looking for the quick answer. Watson completed the 45. We talked about the monumental turnaround. It was a 20-0 lead for the Thundering Herd early in the ball game. In the second quarter, it was the beginnings of the Toledo comeback. And then in the third quarter, it has been all Rockets, 22-6 so far. That's the sign of a championship football team. Often you're, you're judged on how you start the game and how you start a half. Second down and 10. Leftwich on the shuffle pass to Wallace. Wallace drilled in the 29. It'll be third down. And about five to go. Tom Ward making the stop on the play. Marshall has defeated Toledo in two out of the last four MAC championship games. You guys got to stay together down there. They're starting to argue a little bit with each other. Take care of your own. Do your job. 
few furrowed brows on the sidelines, Chris. Third down and five for the herd. Toledo coming with a blitz. Watts. At the 37-yard line, and it's a first down for Marshall. has been dominated by Marshall. They beat Toledo twice in 7 to 98, and then the last two victories have been over Western Michigan, looking for their fifth straight tonight. Their motto is we play for championships. Might as well say we win championships by winning four in a row, but they got their hands clean tonight. First time that the title game has been played somewhere else. Watson completed the 43. With Bob Pruitt, this has been a big play, big performance, big result team. They've won 15 times in 16 championships and bowl games under that name. That's why there's no panic in this team, because they've been there before. They've been in championship games. They know how to handle situations, especially when there's a momentum shift. They just got to maintain their composure, stick with got them here. Second down and 10, with 3.13 to play in the third. Incomplete. Leftwich overthrowing Davis, and it's one he wants back. Yeah, he knows it too because he had Josh Davis on the out and up. That's one where you want to put a little bit of touch on. You see the ISO here. Watch. Here comes Josh Davis. I go out. No, I'm going to go up. And he's got everybody jumping underneath. Josh Davis running down the sidelines. You got to put a little bit of air under that. He knows it. He said, I should have lofted that one, not drilled that one. Gives him a third down and 10 for us. So three of eight on third down. Out of the shotgun. Leftwich tried to squeeze it into Marriott incomplete. And it's fourth down. And he got popped back at the 30. And Jake McLean does a great job of putting his shoulder pads right in the rip. But this is a great pass. He knows he's going to oh, he, he knows he's going to take the shot. He took one right in the gut, but he stood in there and delivered the ball. That shows me toughness. That was a great throw. That was a drop ball. McLean did a great job of putting his helmet right through his gut, though. They're going to whistle this one dead and bring it back. And a flag down on the play as well. Mark, I was talking to a pro scout from the Cleveland Browns. Right. Timeout. Toledo, their second. He asked me, Chris, what do you think of Leftwich? I go, what do you think? He said, Marino-esque. Really? Marino-esque. And that's a pretty high compliment high for a quarterback. Is. Sure is. Let's go back to 1997 as Toledo calls timeout. And have a look at what transpired in that game. Toledo taking on Marshall. I think you recognize some of the perpetrators here. Number 88, Randy Moss from Chad Pennington as Marshall won the final score, 34 to 14. Moss working his magic. And Toledo Tom looking for a different result tonight. His first game as the head coach in this MAC championship game. And you talk about Bob Pruitt, you know, you learn a lot from his temperament. Chris, you remember when we were down in Gainesville, the day before the NCAA announced suspensions of several of their players for some violations. Pruitt handled things very well with a lot of humor. He said, you know what? I wanted it to happen now because I thought Florida <laughs> needed a little distraction. Yeah. That would give us our best chance of winning. But it tells you a lot about how this team deals with adversity. They did it very calmly and did it well. Well, you know, Mark, you can't say it's not the team that's like their head coach. That's why this team has won championships because he's a championship coach. And this one will go into the end zone off the foot of Todd Franz, a 62-yard punt, giving them a net of 42, but Bob Brood in his sixth year. Ten straight wins since that season opening loss down in Gainesville. They learned from that. They've got some players back. The receivers got better as the year went on, and that's which got better as the year went on. Now, you're Bob Pruitt, you're a defensive coach. You're down three with the momentum against you. He's telling his defense right now, or his defensive coordinator, hey, boys, we're going to get a heavy dose of Chester Taylor this series. 
number 19. With his eyes on the prize, his senior closing out his career at Toledo. This game and a bowl game remaining would love nothing more than to win the MAC title. And here he is, Chester Taylor. To the 15. Maybe they didn't get that message. You're going to get a heavy dose of Chester Taylor. Why? Because he's one of the top running backs in the country. Watch the offensive line again, knocking people down, knocking people back, and outrunning people. He can run through you. He can run around you. He can run past you. It's a great job of vision. Great job of seeing the hole and bursting through the hole. Nice cut, one cut, and gone. A 65-yard gallop. Down to the 15, first and 10. Incomplete. And Terrence Tarpley. Blew that one up. Well, they got to quit running that play to Tarpley's side. He's lucky the Tarpley didn't see the ball coming, or that was six points going the other way. Now, he could have called interference, but you can't call interference because the play, the ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, there you go. There you go. There's a little teaching for the teacher. That's why those fans were booing. They thought it should have been pass interference. Plus, the big fellow there pushed him into him a little bit. Second down and 10, McCray is the lone back. McCray down to the 12 yard line, tackled by Charlie Tynes, the linebacker. Folks, tomorrow at 745 Eastern on ESPN and SEC West Showdown, Rohan Davey and the LSU Tigers taking on Auburn. Live from Baton Rouge, the winner is a spot in the SEC championship game against the Florida Gators. Florida Gators have been in the news a lot lately. <laughs> there were words with Florida State. Third down and six. They better get their eyes on the ball. The toss to McCray. And he was tackled short of the 10 yard line by Satterwhite. As time winds down here in the third period comes France for an alleged, and I say alleged, field goal attempt. Last time they set up in this territory, they ran a fake for a touchdown. Yeah, Mark, I don't understand. If you're going to run the ball, run the ball in the middle of the field so you give your kicker the ball lined up in the middle of the field. Now he has to kick across his body on the right hash into a, a pretty stiff wind in his face. This one coming from 28 yards out. And it's good. Just inside that left upright. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, the kicker for Toledo, Todd France, has played a huge role in the game tonight. And it's no surprise to the coaching staff. He's the first one to practice, the last one to leave. In fact, he's here so much. Coach Estes had a teammate to the stadium for him. He lives there in the area, and they say he's here kicking every single day throughout the summer, year-round. I talked to him before the game and said, what about this wind? Is it a distraction at all? And he said, no, I love it. Here is a kicker with an attitude you would love, Chris. He's a football guy, even though he is just a kicker. Well, I do love him because he tries to knock over goalposts after he scores touchdowns. <laughs> He's the toughest kicker I know. And look at that, a 3.96 GPA in mechanical engineering, so he knows something about force and about playing angles, and it shows in his place kicking. Yeah, and but an academic All-American in 2000 and a candidate this year as well. You got a 3.9 in mechanical engineering. Isn't engineering like having a thing with buildings? You can't knock buildings <laughs> over, so you can't have goalposts over. Maybe he knows something we don't. <laughs> you know? But it's interesting, Holly mentioned how he's always the first and last one. We were here in practice on Thursday, and we watched him in a drizzle be the last one to leave. Stayed an extra half hour after everyone had left. Yeah, I like his concentration and his routine. Marshall can't even get out of their own way right now. Toledo claiming that they'd have it. Still no signal from the official. Well, you don't know what's going on at the bottom of that pile. Marshall going to start all the way back on its own 12. You got to be able to handle these squib kicks. You got to be a, a shortstop out there. Handle the short hop right there. Now, if you don't get it, secure the football. Curtis Jones, number 80. Now the pile starts. Guys start working that pile. Start grabbing anything you can. Hopefully, he'll come out with the ball. 
That actually happens? Get oh, out of here. Man. <laughs> First down and ten for the herd. Under a minute to play in the period. Watts. Watts with the first down out to the 26. That's the All-American. Over 1,300 yards receiving this year to go along with 18 touchdowns. First and 10. Fourth time they ran that play, the fourth time they got great yards off it. I believe we're still setting that, that play up with somebody going down the field. Fake the watch go deep. They run almost the same thing to the other side. Watts to the 35, brought down by Anderson. Anderson was the guy that gave up a couple of touchdown passes early in the ball game, but since that point, Chris, he hasn't been victimized. Yeah, Jay, who has kind of stepped up and answered the bell. And one thing about playing corner, you better have a short memory or you'll, you'll be in an insane asylum. <laughs> Second down and two. Marshall is going to be going into the wind as we start the fourth quarter. Here's Wallace on the ground. Up down to the 38-yard line by Andy Boyd, the free safety, and three-time max selection on the academic honor roll. First down and 10 after that Wallace run. 16 seconds to play in the third. Chester Taylor, meanwhile, 150 yards, 114 coming this period. Yeah, I like that 6.82, because he's got two big screens where he's made great yardage on. Get him the ball in the open field, he can make some things happen. Well, the first 45 minutes are in the books. Early on, the story was Leftwich, but since, it's been all Chester. Dashing and darting into the end zone. And Toledo leads by six when we come back for the final 15 minutes. ESPN College Game Day, presented by Discover Card now. Come, the day has just begun. Oh. Why do I like holiday shopping at Office Depot for my friends and family? <laughs> because they have a shipping center right in the store. So I can choose any of their great gifts, wrap and pack them, and Office Depot sends them anywhere in the world. That means I can get just the right thing for everyone on my list. It's empty. Office Depot, proud sponsor of the 2002 U.S. Olympic team. Now they're not just to behold, they're to be held. Now at Burger King, buy a Whopper value meal and get a Lord of the Rings light-up glass goblet, just $1.99 each. Collect all four. The adventure begins here. Will she feel the same way if you lose your hair? Sure. She'll just feel it about somebody else. Relax. Rogaine. It's simple, safe, and clinically proven to regrow hair. Does she want you to use Rogaine? Better ask. Momentum, the operative word, as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Toledo leading number 18, Marshall, 35 to 29. The herd looking for its fifth consecutive MAC title. First down and ten. Marriott rocked and separated from the ball by Daniels. Second down and ten. That's a good shot by Daniels and a good break on the football. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Marriott saw him coming out of the corner of the eye and maybe got a little bit of an alligator arm. That's up a second down and ten. Wallace the lone back. Toledo blitzing. There's Marriott on the catch and brought down at the 36 by Wood. 
take a look at our ESPN game track. De Niro Marriott. Remember, De Niro means money in Spanish, and he has been cash in the bank for Marshall. We talk about getting Chuck Taylor off. He's gotten off this second half, 150 yards rushing and one TD. And Toledo, three of four in converting fourth downs. A big one here. France running it in on the big field goal. Third and 12. What a catch by Marriott. Had to stop and turn around, and they got the first down. He was working on Heflin. One of the first things pro scouts look at is the receiver's ability to adjust on the football. You see Denaro Marriott come in, set it down, and come back to the football to adjust his body. Now, the only problem I have with that is he could have taken that route to the sticks. That way, when he came back, he would still be at the sticks. He ran it a little bit short, but the ball was thrown short. He did a great job of adjusting on the football and securing the catch. And he laid out. Well, he's been impressive tonight. Very impressive. They are about, well, that much short of the first down. Inches short. And the offense remains on the field. Fourth and inches to go. They're one of one on fourth down situations tonight. Now they've got it on a quarterback sneak to see if they go back to it. Whistles went before the play. Sure exactly what happened. That's a tough break for Marshall. Look at it. Hey, can you let us play football? You put the ball in play, let him play. It kind of shows your hand there. It sure does. You got to yeah. come back with something else. Putting the ball in play has been such a big issue this year, especially teams that like to run offense with a lot of tempo and pace. Well, that was that was caused by the no money offense. It's the way teams want, like you said, get the ball and play. The officials want to control the tempo of the game. They don't want the teams to control the tempo. It's their job to control the tempo. Fourth and inches. We're going to do it again. Well, they think it's sneak now. Look at them. They're all up there. Look at Rekwitz. And a flag on the play. He may have drawn Toledo offside. For 93, David Brockmore was one of the guys moving up front. Yeah, what happened sometimes, you saw Tom Ward come up there and he puts his hands on his defense right, lineman's oh, rear end. Five, That's called go. goosing him. Those defensive linemen feel somebody on their rear end. They jump. They get nervous because they know they want to get off on the ball. And you see Ward right there. Watch him. Number 30? Yeah, right there. I think he touched him right there in the hip. Got McLean to jump off a little bit, plus he's a good hard count. First down and 10. Ball at the 47-yard line of Toledo. To the backfield. Wallace Watts. Number 57, David Gardner was bringing some steam and heat. I love that. Why? Because he kept his head up. And he tried to wrap him up, Mark. But he, Wallace bounced off him so far, he missed him when he tried to wrap him up. It's a great break on the ball. The middle linebacker, and I'll tell you, Butchie Wallace, he takes the hit, but he's still falling forward. Take a listen. What a toss complete to Marriott at the 27-yard line. And a late flag. Anderson is going to be flagged for a late hit. Well, you got holding, then you got a dumb foul. Use your head. And there's another flag back at the 46-yard line. They got a holding call on Marshall, then a dumb foul. You know, that's three personal fouls for Toledo tonight. That's something that is mental and something that you need to clean up. The official's going to talk this one over. And 
take their time doing it as well. That's a championship game. You've got to get the call right. Got to be physical when a guy's on the field, not when he's on the sidelines. On the offense, there's no flag on the out of bounds play. Well, I'm wrong. I stand corrected. Okay. Well, they got it straight amongst them. Much to the disdain and chagrin of Bob Pruitt. Right there was a holding on 66 for Marshall. Coretta. He got knocked into our wires. Let's take sure a look that, and see. I'm not sure that Anderson really hit him. It's almost like he fell, Chris. Yeah, he, that, that's, that, that's okay. You're all right, Anderson. Let's go to Holly downstairs. Hey, guys, I was actually standing right here. The Toledo defender did a great job letting up and taking his arms off the player when he came out of bounds. He did trip on the turf and on the camera cable. He did not hit him out of bounds. He thought very clearly it was a heads-up call by the official. At least they uh, corrected themselves. And... The second down and 17 now as a result. Yeah, good job, Holly, on that. And, and the replay confirmed that, that he did try to hold up. So that's a not a dumb foul. That's a smart play, Anderson. Good job of letting up, being a smart football player. A stand corrected. Marshall into the ring here in the fourth period. Trying to defend their conference crown. Mark Jones, Chris Spearman, and Holly Rowe here. 13.09 to play in the fourth. Davis down to the 18, and they got it right back to the spot where the last play was made. A first down for the herd. Mark, remember in the third quarter they ran that same play, and Byron overthrew him a little bit. This time he put some air under it and let Davis run underneath it. You see, there's Davis. He's going to turn it upfield right there. Look at it. He put air under it instead of trying to drill it and let Davis run, run underneath it, then do some damage after he catches the ball. Boy, that's a great ball by Leftwich. First down and 10. You got to run right here. You got to run. Wallace. Met by a host of tacklers led by Brockmore. A 6'2 senior, 249 pounds, first team all Mac. Had eight sacks on the season. For 93 right there on your screen. Second down and nine. 12 27 to play in the fourth. Marshall led 23 to nothing. But it's been all Toledo since the second period. wide to the bottom of your screen. He's got three touchdown passes here. And Leftwich wants to talk things over. They have two remaining. Leftwich and Hurd looking for their fifth consecutive conference crown. And they have 12.06 to get it. We'll be back. The versatile Dremel Rotary Tool. With over 150 available accessories, it does so much, you'll wonder how you ever got along without it. The Dremel Rotary Tool. Every home should have one. Or two. Great. Credit card bill. Look at these fees. Honey? One rate for purchases, a higher rate for cash advances, and those telemarketers. Relax. We switched to Capital One's new no-hassle card. Introducing Capital One's new No Hassle Platinum Card. No balance transfer fees, no telemarketing, one low fixed rate. Huh? Honey? What's in your wallet? Women flock to me because I'm famous, I'm handsome, and you know I have a fabulous tan. <laughs> oh, what also seems to turn them on are my high-tech toys. You know, I got this at Comp USA, oh. and then I added the Linksys wireless network so I can stay connected, even out here. I can, you know, read my emails uh, and, and check out the news and, of course, the weather reports. Look at that. <laughs> they love me. Stay connected up to 1,000 feet away with the Linksys Wireless Network from CompUSA.
right, Graham, go on. Ace Combat 4, great D for everyone. When my time on Earth is gone and my activities here are past, I want they bury me upside down and my critics can kiss my ass. Five twenty-nine here at the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio. This is the MAC Championship game. Marshall has won four straight, looking for their fifth rank, number 18 in the country. But they trail right now with the ball on the 18 of Toledo. It is second down and nine. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe. Left which incomplete for Marion. He's been left with his favorite target today. Number 13 right there on your screen has three touchdown receptions already. Again, yeah, third down and nine. Yeah, Byron just tried to rifle that one in there. That's on a corner route where you want to give it some air and let your receiver run underneath of it. Yeah, he was over the top of the guy. He had to beat deep. Go high, let him run underneath. Marriott now lined up to the short side of the field, bottom of your screen, walks at the top of your screen wide. Wallace the lone back. Touchdown, Marion. He went back to his main man. Decision. He's working on Anderson once again. Uh, Anderson, Anderson played him inside. He should have played him outside because he had his help inside from the free safety. Curtis Henry, the extra point, and Marshall has retaken the lead. Anderson victimized one more time. Marriott with his fourth touchdown catch of the night. Byron Leftwich on point, on target, on the lead when we come back. can you do at vehicles.com in 30 seconds or less? Find a car by make, find a car by type, find a car by price. Find out if the car you're thinking about buying is a lemon. Get a credit check, get pre-approved, and get ready to buy. Compare vehicles, compare features, compare prices. Get insurance quotes, crash and safety test results, and much, much more. vehicles.com. It's your roadmap to the automotive world. College football Saturday. It's the SEC West Championship. Auburn will try to stop Rohan Davey and LSU. Auburn, LSU, 745 Saturday on ESPN. I wonder how our home equity loan is going. I'll check. Here you go, sir. Thank you. Lower, please. Hmm. Mr. Bradley wasn't the lead, but you know, it's looking like Davis. Want banks to compete for your home equity loan? Come to LendingTree.com. Fill out one form and get up to four offers within hours. Well, that's not going to help you, Bradley. When banks compete, you win at LendingTree.com. Toledo now trailing by one, about to get the ball in the kickoff. De Niro Marriott with a MAC championship record four touchdown receptions tonight. Taken. 
by McRae back at the 14-yard line. And let's take one more look at that touchdown catch by Marriott. His fourth. This is a great block. And watch Anderson. What he has to do is he has to keep him on the outside. See, he's in good position right now because he has Sid Daniels, the safety, coming from here. But as soon as he jumps inside, Marriott works outside. Why? Because he's working away from the double team, Sid Daniels. He's going to work away from him. Does work outside. Byron recognizes it. Throws the ball to the outside. Stay outside. Anderson, you would have made a play. Force him back to your safety. He let him, he let him get outside. He had good position from the beginning. Then he dropped it. Tried to jump inside and make a play. Couldn't happen. That defense surrendering 196 yards per game through the air. First down and 10. The Rockets' chance to answer. Taylor. Stopped up at the 20-yard line. Got about five on first down. Max Yates providing the stop. And don't forget, folks, coming up right after the game at Sports Center. Lots of interesting stories coming up on Sports Center tonight. Reese Davis is covering the base for the uh, college football show. And Linda Cohn will be doing the honors on Sports Center for the game. Second down and five. Taylor stopped up behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and long. Ralph Street, one of the first ones to get there. Marshall starting to does a good job of getting penetration right here. You'll see them now they're getting penetration. Nobody's getting cut. Coming from the backside, you got guys running the football. Everybody's running the ball, making plays. They were they were arguing with a little bit, a little bit with each other down there on the sidelines. When Marshall had the ball offensively, they got to get it together. They're coming together this series, though. Answer the challenge. Now's not the time to get your feelings hurt. Third down and nine. Molding out of the shotgun. All day to throw. And down at the three, he slipped. He had tremendous time. The secondary with good coverage. Well, you want to define what a coverage stack is? There's a definition of it. You time it. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four, thousand five. Now guys downfield got to start working to get open. If they're covered, come back to the quarterback to help them out. Don't leave them out there and hang it. On fourth and 22, Jones lets it bounce at midfield. And fumbled it. Toledo got it back. Keith Dandridge recovered the loose ball. himself plowing his way down to the 25 where he's met by Yates. 9.37 to go in the fourth period. Dom Amstutz in his first year as head coach. 8-2 on the regular season looking for the MAC title tonight. The fumbles lost on the season. Three of them tonight already. That's a third. A third of what they had the whole season. Second down and five. Gray, just short of the 20, brought down by Ralph Street. It'll be third down and short. Curtis Jones fumbling the punt return just moments ago to give Toledo the ball. It's going to be third down and one. There's a look at Jones, who tried to field it like a third baseman on a short high. 
He'd keep his head down. I told my son I'm hitting grounders the other day, keep your head down. Don't pick your head up. He picked his head up. Third and one. Taylor across the 20. And it's a Toledo first down. I'll tell you the Mac defensive player of the year, Mac Shakes, made a touchdown saving tackle right there. If he did not make that tackle, there was a huge cutback lane. Chester could have gotten in the end zone. That was a great tackle by Max Yates. Yates has really improved this year. Not so much in his, his running game, playing the run, but his pass coverage, that's one of the biggest improvements. Well, that comes with experience and recognition, more than repetition. The more you see it, the more you recognize routes. The better defender you become as a linebacker defending the pass. Tavares Bolden calls Toledo's final timeout. They are now out of timeouts with 8-11 to play in the fourth quarter. Bob Pruitt's team leading by one, but trying to keep Toledo out of the end zone when we come back. Moo. Now's a great time to call 1-800-GATEWAY, because right now you can get a great deal on a computer like the Gateway 500S. It comes loaded with an Intel Pentium 4 processor, 20 gigabyte hard drive, and a CD burner. And if you call now, we'll double the RAM for free. We'll even give you the choice of a color printer, a scanner, or a PC camera for free, too. You get it all for under 1200 bucks. to so call 1-800-GATEWAY now. That's 1-800-GATEWAY. Hey, man. Where have you been? The Outback. In the Outback, huh? Well, you missed a great game. No, I saw it there. In the Outback. Mm-hmm. It's a good reception. It's great. They're very friendly, too. You see any uh, wildlife? Well, the big blooming onions are pretty wild. And the food? <laughs> We're talking about the food. <laughs> <laughs> so don't just go out. Go out back. Outback Steakhouse. No rules. Just right. Can you see what's so special about the Grand Synchro? It's the first shaver whose head moves from side to side, so it captures more hair and cuts closer. Only it moves so fast, you can't see it. But you can hear it. And to keep it feeling like a new shaver every day, here's how to clean it. with a tenuous one-point lead, 36-35, with 8-11 to play. And moments ago, a critical play not going the herd's way. Curtis Jones out of Okeechobee, Florida, fumbling the punt. And I agree with him trying to field it, but when he fumbled the punt there, not only did he lose the football, but they lost great field position. Taylor. Tackle with the 14 by Tarkley. It's tarpley coming up from his corner spot. He's played a nice game tonight. Underwent knee surgery earlier this season. Two weeks before the first game of the season for them. Has good speed and has regained most of that speed during the course of his rehab. And I've been impressed with his tackling ability. Wrapping people up. But Chester Taylor always gets that extra yard. Come on, roll it. Here he is again. And forward to the 12-yard line. Early in the game, it appeared to be a rout. Marshall with 16 first downs to none for Toledo. And then Toledo flipped the script in the second quarter, Chris. Third quarter was all Rockets and relatively even right here in the fourth. Third down and four for the Rockets. But Toledo really responded in that second quarter. They needed to. It was in danger of becoming a, a rout. First down at about the eight-yard line. It'll be first down and goal for the Rockets. That offensive line is taking control of this football game. Anytime you establish a line of scrimmage and establish a run, those guys get stronger. The defensive line gets weaker. It's a morale buster. I'm telling you, I've been there. That offensive line is knocking them back, winning the pad level battle. Their pads are lower than the defensive line of Marshall's. First down and goal. Taylor. Touchdown, Toledo!
watch two players, Byron Leftwich and Chester Taylor. Big time players play big in big games. And those two guys have certainly played big tonight in the MAC championship. Johnson in motion. And they're going to say incomplete. Intended for Holmes. 41-36. Number seven is the MVP of the conference. He can show his skills when we come back. I will lead my battalion into the Argonne, but I doubt if you'll see me or my men again. Rick Schroeder, in a true story of ordinary men, made extraordinary by their bravery. Caught between two lines of fire, the Germans gave them two options. Surrender or die. Our boys are bombing us! Take cover! They chose a third. Forward! The Lost Battalion premieres Sunday at 7 p.m. on A&E. The other stand is still for me, Bert. Well, did he get the phone back? It's the third truckload this week. Yeah, great deal. You get the bonus pack, $49.99, after a $30 rebate. Plus, now you can get 5,000 minutes for just $39.99 a month. Yeah. Can't keep them on the shelf. <laughs> Was there a pink doll on that shipping order? Nope. Hey, did I give it to Bruno? Get the Primeco oh. bonus pack and now get 5,000 minutes a month for just $39.99. Call 1-800-PRIMECO. Introducing the Navigator Handsaw, built by Black & Decker. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Go! Go! No, no. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. Man, that is awesome. Get Selsun Power. Folks, don't forget, coming up immediately following the game, your one-stop shopping of sports information, Sports Center. The Irish, are they out of luck? What about MJ? Chris Berman's two-minute drill, John Anderson, and Linda Cohn hosting. Chester Taylor, meanwhile, 29 rushes today for 172 yards and two touchdowns. He has 55 career rushing TDs. 20 this year, Chris. Heed the words of Coach Ames that coming out of the second half. We're going to get Chester Taylor the ball in the second half. That's a smart early half. Jones fields the kickoff cleanly. Makes it out to the 21-yard line. Chester Taylor from River Rouge with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons and putting on a performance tonight. He can make you miss and he can run through tackles. Two touchdown runs tonight. And especially in the second half, he has been a big factor. His feet never stop, Mark. That's what I love about him. His feet are always moving. He's got great balance and vision. First down and 10 for the MVP of the league, Leftwich. Leftwich sliding just beyond the 30 near the first down marker at the 31. So the big fella can move a little bit, too. He buys himself time. He's not a sprinter. <laughs> He's good enough to buy himself some time, understand where he is, get down after he got the first down. His maturation process showing in the numbers right there. 27 of 43. Four touchdowns, but that one interception tonight. First and ten. Threw it a little bit behind Marion, but still catchable. That was catchable. It looked like he tried to shot put it a little bit there. That wasn't natural. He just kind of tried to place it instead of just throw it, almost aiming it. Don't aim, Byron. You're too good of a quarterback. Just let it rip. You'll hit your guy. Right up with four touchdown catches tonight. A Mac title game record. Second down and ten. Bob Pruitt says that Leftwich is the best quarterback in the country. The best quarterback he's ever been around. And that's saying a lot when you look at the guys that he has coached. Danny Werfel at Florida. Pennington here. Wallace brought down at the 32-yard line by Daniels. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, 
Some people might think Byron Leftwich might be tempted to jump to the pros this summer, but he is good friends with Chad Pennington. Pennington was projected as a second or third round draft choice after his junior year. He stayed for his senior year and was the first quarterback taken following his senior year. Leftwich is taking some of that advice, and the coaches anyway think he will stay for his senior season. Let's go and take comfort in that. Third and eight. Complete for the first down at the 48-yard line to Watts. He laid it where only Watts could catch it. That was a great throw again by Byron Leftwich. The other thing, Marcus, is composure. There's no panic in him. He realizes they need a touchdown to take the lead. But you see him surveying the field. He checked his options over to the wide side of the field. Knew his Watts receiver was coming inside. He hit him. There's Watts again. And they're going to say it's incomplete, that it hit the carpet first. That one just a little bit low. Watts with 18 touchdown catches this year. So he almost tried to force that one a little bit. A short hop. Yeah, a short hop. That's a good job by Watts to keep him going, because you never know. You never know. Let's see if he got his hands underneath it. Closer from that call, yeah. Good call by the official. They have the angle. They see it better than we do. Second and ten. Kellen spun around at the 46-yard line. Number seven, Sid Daniels, lowering the boom. And Tom Moore came high. Sid Daniels went low. Tom Moore came high. I'd like to see your linebackers converge like that. High low. Wrap them up, though, boys. Wrap them up. Third and about three to go. They converted last time on third down to five of 12 today in third down situations. Garrett lined up to the bottom of your screen. Davis with the first down at the 33. Marshall with two timeouts remaining as we look at 421 remaining in the ballgame. First down and 10 for the herd. Yeah, Byron is looking at Josh Davis the whole time because he realized that a linebacker had to get out and cover down on the inside number two receiver. Knowing they had too far to go if he got rid of the football time, be a play that was impossible to stop with the Toledo defense. Davis again out of the slot. At about the 15 yard line, and another first down for Marshall. So the herd methodically moving the ball downfield. Amstutz defenseless at this point. Again, Byron reading the defense, finding the weakness of the zone, delivering the football. Now Josh Davis shows him first. Breaking the tackle, Corey Morris. Corey Morris has got to get him down if he has an opportunity to. Tackling. Don't give him that extra yardage. Wallace to back. Gardner making the tackle at the 15. Now, Toledo's defense is recognizing what we pointed out early in the football game. Anytime the running back is seven yards from the right center, it's been run 100% of the time for Marshall. That time they called it out. It was a run because Wallace was lined up seven yards behind Leftwich, which gives him time to get the ball in the backfield and read where the open hole is. Wallace has run for 99 yards today, Chris. He now sits on the sidelines to watch. Second and ten. A bunch formation right here. That's a lot of pick routes. Watch for the pick routes. He looks that way. Not sure if that one was tipped at the line of scrimmage. It may have been. It'll be third down and about nine to go for Leftwich. The Leftwich is looking toward the bunch route to see defense lineman recognizing he's setting them feet. Them hands got to go up. It's a good job of getting your hands up and getting in the throwing lane. Bill Gibson from Burlington, Ontario. That's about 40 minutes south of Toronto. 6-2. He got up there to be about 6-6 in that one and not the 6-6 quarterback's line drive throw down. Third down and 10. Wallace hit immediately on the play by Tom Ward. And it'll be fourth down and long for the herd. And left 
which remains on the field. Not sure at this point you can trust your defense to get the ball back with just 250 remaining. You know, one play to look for, Mark, is Marriott caught two touchdowns early in the ball game, running a post route. Marriott this time at the top. Let's circle him. Let's show you where he is. There he is, right there. He's right up there. That's him. He's been dangerous down here in the red area. Launch his foot wide to the bottom of your screen. He's tapping his hip. Left wing overthrows Davis incomplete. inches away from completing this touchdown pass. Yeah, he wanted to go to Marriott. He, he bought himself some time. He kind of rushed the throw just a little bit. Had Josh Davis wide open. We see Josh Davis going to work himself across the field. As he's wide open, he's got to deliver the football. He's kind of watching here. He's going to try to throw while he's running forward. When he does that, you see that? That's not a good throw because it's by the left of it. He would have kept his feet set. He might have been able to deliver the football where he needed to. Toledo now going to try and use up a little clock with Chester Taylor. Taylor having a great day, 178 yards rushing. We're at the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio. Marshall, ranked number 18 in the country, taking on Toledo in the MAC Championship. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Fieldman and Holly Rowe down on the sidelines. Early in the game, Marshall jumped out to a 23 to nothing lead. It looked like it was all over. Then the tide turned in the middle of the second period. Marshall retook the lead in the fourth quarter briefly until a fumbled punt by Curtis Jones led to a Toledo touchdown. And don't forget, folks, coming up immediately following the game at Sports Center, John Anderson and Linda Cohn. Yeah, I was just going to say, Marshall's got to start thinking about using timeouts. They have two of them left. They're letting that clock tick down. You gotta call. If you're gonna call a timeout, call it as soon as the play's dead. Time running out on Leftwich. We'll be right back. I'm going to make a collect call. Careful how you dial, boys. Hey, but we always use 1 800 collects. Then you already know it saves at least a buck or two. Of course. It's so easy. 1 800 collect. Save a buck or two. Olympus Stylus Cameras. Performance meets style again. Nothing's impossible. Olympus. It was the mountains and the snow and the water below. Are you ready? And you will know it's cold at last when the Coors Light hits your glass. Are you ready for a cold one? Are you ready for a cold Coors Light? Chester Taylor, the senior, out of River Rouge, leading Toledo on its way to a 41-36 lead with 126 to play. Taylor's run 31 times today for 181 yards. He can run around you, he can run over you, he can run through you, and he has done all of the above today to the thundering herd defense. Taylor playing in his last home game in front of the Glass Bowl crowd here and putting on a real show. Look at what he's done against Marshall. The first three times out, Chris, he wasn't too productive, but he turned the tide tonight. No, he has. And Mark, the most impressive thing, Marshall knows they're going to give the ball to Chester Taylor. And what Chester Taylor's doing, he's hitting the line of scrimmage, and he's moving 10 guys by his leg drive. They just keep pushing that power forward, and Marshall can't do anything to stop him. Third down and one. Taylor got it. And Marshall has one timeout remaining. Tom Amstutz 
123 away from the MAC title. Curtis Jones contemplating, debating what went wrong on that fumbled punt. Nose of the ball resting on the 30. Taylor, 188 yards rushing to go along with a couple of touchdowns in Sports Center. John Anderson and Linda Cohn doing it. Coming up next, Mr. Toledo, Tom Toledo. A little over a minute away from his first MAC Conference title as head coach. Tavares Bolden, the quarterback, coming back from missing a game last week with back spasms, leading his team to apparent victory. There he is. As serious a football player as I've ever had, as quoted by Rob Spence, the offensive coordinator. Bolden, the father of a two-year-old son, taking things very seriously tonight. As for Byron Leftwich, well, there might be another one in his future, another MAC title. He has one year remaining. Toledo trailed 23 to nothing. Marshall burning its last time out. We'll be back. This holiday, stay connected to the people who matter most. With the shared advantage plan from AT&T Wireless, you get unlimited local calling between plan members. So dad could talk to mom, mom could talk to the kids, and the kids could talk to each other as often as they like. Start with two phone lines for $59.99 a month and add up to three more for only $9.99 each. You can also get up to five free phones with nationwide long distance included and plenty of minutes to go around. All for life. Call 1-800-IMAGINE-TODAY for a gift that will have the whole family talking. Bob Pruitt's team for the first time in five years playing the MAC title game outside of Huntington, West Virginia. And in trouble, in danger of losing their throne, their title right now. Flag down on the play. 68 and 10 as head coach at Marshall. And this one is against the herd. He'll be back as a championship coach with championship teams. Has a hard time winning up here at the glass ball. Yeah, eight of the last nine times here, they have lost. And, you know, it was Andy Boyd who had those prophetic words before the game. And as for the defense of Marshall, they said, hey, listen, Chris Crocker said, if we don't stop Chester Taylor, we're in deep, deep trouble. Uh, well, well, they did They're going to use up, well, they really can't use up all of the play clock because it's not moving. It does now. We've got the Toledo students down here. Away from the scoreboard in the end zone. They're ready to, to make a run on the field. Hopefully they got their rubber thick cleats on so they don't slip. Well, I don't know if they're going to be able to protect those goal posts tonight. Well, they get Todd France to knock them down for them if they can't get it down. And they just got Coach Amstutz with the Gatorade shower. It's a cold one. They are ready to storm the field here at the Glass Bowl on their way to their 14th consecutive victory at home. That'll about do it. Welcome to Sports Center Team with Linda Cohn. I'm John Anderson. Thanks for having us. We come not to bury the Lions. We come to praise them, although we might be willing to part with MJ. Uh, speak for yourself on that. Also ahead, our college game day crew is at the Swamp, and Chris Berman deals the cards in his two-minute drill. But first, Lakers and Sonics.
I have the honor. First quarter, Shaq down low, working over Vin Baker, little tussle, no, no call. Shaq upset with the play, gonna yell at the ref, Bob Delaney gets one technical, and then keeps yelling until finally they say, Shaq, how about shampoo, rinse, repeat, go to the showers. They eject O'Neal from the game. The Lakers made one catch for 22 yards. That was like on a broken play. They've not been able to get it to him in the main offense. Portland Johnson with his shirt out, back in and running back. Pesavento going to have to throw it away. There's your fourth down now. You would assume a punt. I don't think we'll see another trick play. Well, Major's going to get his wish. Get the game in his hands. Six points. Chance to be a legend in Texas, maybe forever. One of the better punters in the Big 12, Mark Mariscal. He'll try to bury Major inside that 20-yard line. That's what's critical here. Try not to give away field position. Try not to let Basher have a good return. Such a staging. Got real close. Basher lets it go. And there is a penalty flag as they attack the punter and miss. And Mariscal is being congratulated on the far side as he draws the penalty. It's a first down, automatic. Mac Brown rolled the dice. He thought it would, at the worst, would be a five-yard running into the kicker. He's going to get the major this time. 15-yarder, automatic first down. Mariscal gets it, lay out, and hits him clean. That's a good call. That's a good call. Jeeger? Jeeger comes across. You've got to go across where the ball is going to be punted, not where the punter was. And that's a good call. I think that puts that punter in danger. And Colorado keeps the ball. Wow. Not only do they keep the ball, the field position is now the 26-yard line for Brown and friends. A lot of things now, Brent. It's going to force Texas to use their timeouts. And Colorado could kick a field goal to make it a nine-point game. 